<laughs> All right, bro. Hey. What's going on, Beckman World? We got the man here. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Hey, I got to say this real quick. Eric's mic's not working. Okay, so Eric, you're going to be on the sidelines. We're going to share. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to oh, yeah. share. And, and you're going to share. about a fist, fist distance away when you can. As close as like possible. Like this? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, we got Garrett Wing here from American Standard K9. Here's what I want to start with. Here's what I want to tell you, bro. I want to tell you, I'm not a big uh, viewer of YouTube dog training content, okay? And so I've gone down the rabbit hole of your videos lately, and I cannot tell you how impressed and entertained I am by your videos. Bro, entertaining people matters. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I do, yeah. It matters. And I, and I appreciate the compliment. I really do. There are times where I was watching your shorts laughing out loud. I, I commented Good. the other night. I don't know if you saw that. I was like laughing out loud. Do you, that's not normal on a YouTube dog training channel. Right, right, right. Yeah. So there's two things that I want to tell you. Okay. One, entertainment matters to people in this day and age all the time. Yeah. And two, the last thing I'll say is I watch your videos and I go, and then it wasn't until you came in earlier and we started talking about your past that I realized why. You have videos and I watch your videos and I go, this guy has worked with a ton of dogs. Mm. And I really didn't know your past. And then we, our past are basically the same, board and train at our house, mm. gets tons of dogs over 15 years. I've worked with a lot and I realize what you've worked with a lot. I watch little snippets of your videos and I'll see you talk about bones for dogs. And you're like, oh, and this wears down their teeth. And I'm like, oh yeah, that takes five years to learn that. And right. then I'll watch another video and I'll be like, that takes... 2000 dogs to learn what you just said. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? And I just didn't realize that I, I I'm so impressed by your videos and your knowledge. And then on top of that, your entertainment. So I don't know how you respond to that because I just told you all these great things about you respond however you want. Well, first off, I appreciate it. And, uh, I, I want to say thank you gentlemen for having me on. Uh, I think it takes a lot in the dog training community for dog trainers to get together because we know the old saying, right? Oh, yeah. If two dog trainers in the same room only talking smack about the third one, that's not there. Yeah. And I've been around, been in the game for a while. I'm a bit of a newcomer to the social media scene yeah. compared to some others. Yeah. But you all are the first ones to reach out and extend the olive branch, so to speak, or a hand and, and invite me on a podcast. That's awesome. Hey, thank you very much. And I've been on one other podcast, don't get me wrong, but someone with a sizable audience. Such yeah. As yourselves. Uh, other than that, I'm kind of the black sheep in this balanced dog training community where I don't know, man, I'm just not feeling the love. So today <laughs> I'm feeling the love today. So I appreciate that. I'm so happy about that. And we could argue who's more of the black sheep. Um, but you know, I, I feel that as well yeah. at times. Uh, and guess how many people I've been asked to be on a podcast by none goose. Egg, yeah. None. Yeah. Nobody's ever reached out. And, and so I'll today. Because we will be starting our podcast next week, and you guys will be more than happy. I would love to have you on. I'll, I'm coming to Florida. I lived in Orlando. Oh, no. I'm in North Carolina. Now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, but even better. I'm Charlotte's I'm beautiful. I'm, I'm driving coming. up. Well, I thought you lived in Florida. So I'll say Florida. And my wife's in Jacksonville and my daughter right now. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Not that that matters. But, and may uh, I say something, too, since we're, you know, pumping, it, pumping up each other's egos or whatever oh, it is we're doing yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the podcast you guys were talking about. about kind of like ranking dog trainers on a scale. And I was really, I was into it. I was watching, but where's he going with this? Yeah. You were really hitting the nail on the head there. Was I? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, good. Yeah. And not for nothing. What what was it? Like six levels? Let's just call Something it Something like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm like, hey, bitch, am, I, am I at least a level one trainer? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I got level one, level two. If yeah, it was yeah. six levels, I got up to level five. And it, then. It was five levels. Okay. So then I got up to level four. Oh, because level five, the top, top, don't quote me on what it was, but it was dog trainers that can use dogs to train other dogs or however you wanted to, to title it. Yes. And that is not something I've mastered yet. It's it's it I say it scares me, uh, but I am very impressed how you have the confidence to use Prince to do what nature intended. Let let them work it out, yeah. you know, and I've heard of this training. I'm familiar with it. I'm not saying I don't dabble in it a little bit. Yeah. 
I deal with it more with like reactive dogs or dogs that are a little scared. I'll use a role model dog, yeah, right? Thanos yeah. is a great role model dog. My oldest dog, Zephos, is a role model dog. So we'll use, we'll use it in that sense. Yeah. But I don't let them correct each other. That's yeah. where I'm like, hey, I, I'm scared. I don't I don't need anyone getting bit in the face or – so my hat's off to you. I'm like – but see, we all got something to learn. We got something to strive for. It's on my bucket list to, to dabble in that some more. So, you know, it, I think what you said there, just to put a cap on it, is – I, I was appreciative of what you said, how you laid it out, and it gives me something. To, hey, I got stuff to work on. That's for sure. So very cool that you're able to do that. It's not easy. That's interesting. Eric, was that was the top, um, the person using another dog, or was that the tippy top that I said was like this weird? Yeah. It was basically the top was people working with other people's aggressive dogs. That was the top. And then we had a tippy top yeah, thing that I using said. dogs to train other dogs was the top. But that the tippy, the I told you tiny we, top. We you dogs. added that. Yeah. 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 No, that's really nice of you to say. Um, I I used Bosco, my first Doberman. You, you have to go back in videos to see it. He taught me how to do that. I just randomly led him into the backyard at a house in Point Loma, which you probably drove through. Mm -hmm. It's that, that community down there. And it was this little dog. It was like a feisty. And I was like, oh, what's what's really going to happen? Bosco was like a year old. And I let Bosco in the backyard. And this dog like went up to him. I was a year into this thing, probably dog training. The dog went up to him and just barked and was just like, rah, 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 rah. And Bosco just stood there and he stood tall and he cruised and he peed and he peed. And the dog just went, wah, 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 for like a minute, 30 seconds. And then the dog slowly went away. Then Bosco went and took a ball, picked it up and like dropped it near the ball as a little peace offering. And it's that it's, it was at that moment that I said, just the lack of doing anything. And then it became sort of these moments of correction, mm -hmm. which are few and far between and are tough and like only needs to be done, in my opinion, with a dog that's like per preferably a nine month old I'm the biggest, baddest dude in the world. And I never realized anyone could be bigger and badder than me. Mm. And then what you have is you, I believe you fully have, and I'm not, I'm not telling you to do this. You could call your dogs off of a lot of things. Mm. Connie Corso is maybe a little different than Dobermans. I'd like to hear your thought on that. But I, I mean, you have the control of your dogs where I think you could call them out of quite a bit. Cause that's the main thing for 100%, that. Yeah. I don't think every dog could do say what Prince does. Because Thanos is super confident, uh, great obedience, but I don't think it's really in his nature to correct other dogs. Yes. It's just, he's just, I yeah. think if him and Prince were hanging out, I, it'd be my guess. But it's for me, it's always like, Ooh, what could yeah. happen? Yeah. I think they'd be asshole buddies, man. I think they'd just be running around playing. Eh, maybe yeah. if a ball got in there, it'd be like, hey, who's the bigger dog? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we wouldn't want it to get to that. But I would see... I, I wouldn't want to put Thanos in a position. Me personally. Yes. No, I get it. I don't. Now, my older dog, Zephos, I, I love him for dogs that have behavioral issues because he's just, he's just him. He yeah. doesn't start nothing. Yeah. He will definitely end something. Yeah. But now he's, he's 13 years old, almost. He's, yeah. he, he's too old. He barely has any teeth left, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's not fair for you him. You wouldn't to, even want him to do that no. ever. But I love him for the puppies though. Yeah. He's super patient and the puppies will jump on him chew on him and he's just he's just like a great like grandfather type dog yeah uh, sets the example which is like your dogs being like good dogs with other dogs like that's most of the work in my opinion of like having an, a, a trainer having a dog is like be cool with other dogs mm -hmm. and then like if they can get that occasional correction in maybe you know it's it's a good thing at times but the problem it's not a problem but like the people want it like, you know, have you ever put stuff out there and you're like, oh, I didn't know that people like want to see that, you know, like a video and you're like, oh, sure. why do they like that? Okay, I, maybe I'll make another one. Now, it's got to be good for the clients. The clients are standing right there when yeah. Prince is getting mad at a dog, which really is few and far between. It just happens to be a lot of my big videos and I don't want to get too far on. The I got you, thing. I got but you, um, yeah. I, that's really cool. And I'm glad you watched that. And I'm glad you. Um, yeah, I was laughing agreed. to myself. I'm like chuckling. Like, yep, yep. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of dog trainers out there that mm, don't fall on any of those levels. Yeah. You know? But Hey, I'll talk. What can you do? I'll they're talk. They're on the bottom of the uh, triangle. <laughs> they're down there. there. So yeah. Joel, do you want me to kick this off with um, the video? I do. I want you to do that. Here's my goal. Here's my goal, right? Is to show a couple of things that are impactful from this guy's work. 
so that the audience can get an understanding of what he does. And they know. Can ask a bit. You know how you know the crossover we probably have in, I'm, in viewers. I'm actually very interested. I have no idea. I don't know. It's got to be so much. I wish we could look at it. I'll it's got to be. Show me yours and just see. What... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. You know. Uh, yeah. I would. I would love to see that. How many of you all um, ha haven't seen any of my videos, but you've been with Beckman for a long time? I don't know. That'd be great. I, I just guess it's it, one we started about the same time. We started a few years ago. I started uh, four years ago, most exactly. Yeah, I started three years ago. Yeah. He so. told me to do YouTube. I remember I was, and I was like, I don't want to do YouTube. And he's like, bro, just do it. Do one every week. It doesn't matter. Um, I want you to bring that up. We're gonna have to take these these yeah, off. Sure, sure, it's gonna be loud. All right, and I'm gonna tell you what I think about this video. So if I bring this up, I'm gonna pause it real quick so it doesn't right. up. All right, let's go ahead. Right here. So All right, so this is a video of you. You're filming, right? Yeah, on my cell phone. Okay. Yeah. We're in a, a small town near where I live. It's a festival. It's, you know, thousands of people there. This is just a few weeks ago, actually. All let's right, do let's it. Go ahead. Right, thank you. Will you stop? Thank you. I just want to say, for one. Which dog is that? That's Thanos. He's a three-year-old Connie Corso. Yeah. Still walkers are about the weirdest looking things in the history of nothing's weirder. She, he just saw the weirdest thing ever and didn't bulk. Mm -hmm. Like you might be like, yeah, well, that's my dogs. I might be like, well, that's my dogs. That's not, that's not terribly normal for the, for a normal person. I think Agreed. a no, stilt I mean, walker, right? Yeah. It's weird. Okay. Number two. And I don't want to just get into everything. That girl probably weighs like 40 pounds. Yeah, pretty much exactly. Yeah. You've ever seen, I mean, th these That's kids. That's my daughter, Aria, by the way. She's seven. We call her a skinny mini. She's, you know, yeah. she's lightweight. Her, my... her five-year-old sister weighs more than her. Yeah. My daughter is also tiny. Man, if they get pulled, the oh. dog won't even know she's there. Yeah, she's going for a ride. She's going for a ride yeah. and the dog doesn't even know. So the confidence of a stilt walker right? Walking by and you having the confidence is, is, is pretty remarkable. There's just some, the, the, the kid walking the dog, the, the stilt walker and the whole thing is, is remarkable. Wow. I appreciate that. And I, I was just, you're just filming, filming just to film it. I know. Yeah. I know. Pretty okay. Much. Play it. Finally takes a look at, but it might be that guy said something. I, I can't talk to him. He's just cruising, man. A buck twenty to buck thirty. I've been waiting. What you think, little one? You got him under control? Why don't you come to a stop? Show me how it's done. Pull up. Perfect. 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 Yeah. One's messing with her. Greatest thing. All right, in keep the it going. World. It's, it's harder than it seems, and the trust needed is. Great. And I was impressed. I appreciate that. There's dog trainers that can't do that. 90% of the dog trainers can't do that. I mean, we got a dog in front of us. we got a dog behind us. Yep. That golden retrieve you see, actually, she's a special case. That dog was on two different psych meds, uh, heavy doses. <laughs> and they gave her to us to fix. Day one, uh, got rid of the psych meds. You had to quit it cold turkey because I'm like, I got to see what's underneath the meds. Because totally. even on the meds, she was a little bit of a psycho. Um, yeah. So I wanted to see how much of it was the meds, how much of it was just her personality, her lack of training. She's completely off meds. In fact, the owner just texted me uh, yesterday uh, to give me an update and just said the dog's doing wonderful. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, that dog needed a lot of help. Beautiful golden retriever, sweet as can be, absolutely neurotic. Yeah. And um, there she was. She's pretty much at the end of training there. And yeah. She's doing wonderful too. Yeah. Yeah. That dog did great. Psych meds are crazy, dude. Like people come in with them and they're like, oh yeah, I talked to the behaviorist or the vet. So we're going to have to get them on. Then it's going to kick in in two weeks. And then, um, and I'm, I'm going like, this is insane. Like, and what's in this stuff, it doesn't kick in for two weeks. So then it's doesn't, they can't get off it for two weeks. They're going into the vet paying hundreds of dollars to adjust these medications. Like it's pretty wild. Yeah. And it, at best it's a band aid. It, yeah. The dog was on, um, we looked it up to see exactly what these yeah, meds yeah. were. And it's basically Xanax and, uh, ADHD medication. Yeah. Xanax. Crazy. Do you know how gnarly Xanax is? Do you know? No. I've never taken it in my life. No. It is, it is a serious, like Jordan Peterson. What? The young kids. Take it. The, yeah, it's a young kid. 
Jordan Pearson like said he almost died from getting off of it or something. Mm -hmm. Like it's serious business. All right, here's Should if we, two more favorites and then we'll do a deep dive. For go for it. You want the other favorite? You're like tripping that we're watching the videos. I, your favorites. I want the one of him uh um talking about um you were in the Ricky Bobby uh outfit. Sure, I would go up to uh latest, hit the latest and then it's five hundred thousand views. So it's like go down to five thousand. Yeah, well, because we redid it right yeah, there. there so is. here's why I like this one, bro. Because <laughs> oh, we gotta take these off or he's sure, gonna sure, blow sure. us up. Here's why I like this one. Oh yeah, and start it from the beginning. I think we'd have this all done. And we had some technical problems before this. It's not easy. Every, yeah. There's a Thank way to you. make us bigger over there, or no? Oh, you did last time, right? We made Isn't it smaller. Another, uh, At least you guys are both there. right there. Right Isn't there, there another one? Yeah, go. Cut me off. Oh, just slide over, babe. There we yeah, go. That, that looks there we go. Hard. All right, play it. I want to hear it. I want people to hear it. If you don't use e-collar technologies, then f you. Available oh, at e-collar.com. So ja, home spring of prong collar. Best for your dog. <laughs> when you work on your mysterious lady parts and stuff, you should have the right tools for your job too. Flex, beginner's menstrual cup. The unofficial sponsor of American Standard Dog. Jim Hodges leashes. The best leash on the market. You know what's better than one beef dick? Three, give your dog the shock of a lifetime with the best treat on the market. Natural Farms Beef Fizzle. You're like. Oh, hey, folks. Didn't see you there. When you want to clean out your asshole and dirty your toilet at the same time, make sure you choose Chipotle. Not in the mood, man. Someone give me my coffee. If you want the best goddamn dog training on the market, make sure you check out DIYK9.com for all your dog training needs. And use coupon yeah, code that, right man. here. You got the plug in there. Yeah, <laughs> He's always telling me to plug things. My name's it. Garrett Wing. All right. Here's why I like that video. One, you had me, I was laughing out loud at your, at your e-collar technologies. You threw in an S in there, right? Is that how you say e-collar technologies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's how it is. Oh, okay. Mm. I thought that was like a Ricky Bobby move. No, no. So e-collar technologies. And then you say F you, which I think is hilarious. And like, so, so what it's did you do? It's not me saying it, by the way. That's my mean? alter ego, Ricky Bobby. Yes. Yeah. So you just said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a video dressed as Ricky Bobby, and I'm gonna like talk about bully sticks." And you just threw in a bunch of a bunch of crap. <laughs> I don't honestly know where this idea came from. We get the craziest ideas most of the time. They come out almost like a like a dare. I dare you. I said, "Okay, let's do." From it. who? Our team. Uh, my wife. My my dog trainers. Uh, yeah. My certified dog trainers. The guys, I'm training. Uh, my assistants, my videographer, my okay. editors, my, anybody on my team could come yeah. up with an idea, throw anything goes yeah. and we'll explore it and we'll round table it and decide maybe if we're going to do it or not. It, that's when we plan it. Sometimes it's like, Hey, get the camera. I got an idea. So this one obviously had some planning in the, in the, yeah, because we had to get the costume. Yeah. So we get the costume and I'm like, all right, I got the costume. Now what? I don't know. Look around, bro. Just see if you can find something that we use. Well, yeah. we use e-collars, we use leashes, but we needed more. <laughs> like the menstrual cup. Don't ask me where we got that. Yeah, exactly. Digging around. I'm like, this yeah, is yeah, this yeah. work. This will work. Yeah. I, and hey, if it make if it makes me or somebody laugh, like it ma it matters in life, it matters in society. I have a whole blooper reel that um bro, just for the fun of it, uh, while we're talking, bring bring that thing up. We're gonna see if we can make Garrett laugh. He's not a yeah. hard guy to make laugh. Um he's got a good sense of humor, and that's one reason I like him. That's one reason I like you. So we're gonna bring up a Beckman dog training blooper reel. Um, the other, oh, here's what I want to ask you. I have, a, I have a specific question for you. So I did a video. Mm -hmm. I was at the pet store. Did you see that video? I already know your answer. I don't think so. Okay. Cause here's why I did a video at pet store and I was walking down the aisles and I was like, throw this away, throw this away. Mm -hmm. Like two weeks later, I see a video of yours. You're oh. in the aisle of a pet store. Right. And you're like, this is crap. This is crap. I and promise you I didn't steal that from you. Oh, I don't care if you stole it. I thought it was for part if, of. Go ahead. I was saying even even if I did steal it from you, I'd say, hey, bro, I stole this from you. Yeah, Shout out for to sure. Uh, it, but, but anyways, what were you saying? You were like gentle leaders, and you're like these are crap. And I was like, oh, he he saw my video, and this is an ego. It, they were literally the same videos. You're kidding, bro. You and you, you shit right? on gentle leaders. 
Did you also? I didn't shit on gentle leaders. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I like him. You hate him. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and and you did it. And then I was like, and then people ask me, they're like, hey, Garrett shit on gentle leaders. And 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 they're like, does that make you mad? And I said on the podcast, I'm like, why would it make me mad? You think I you think I care in any way about gentle leaders? Like me being okay with a product mm -hmm. and someone else. Gentle Leader has never said, never offered me any money. Like, I could care less. You know what I'm saying? No, and I, I know I mean, you don't like him. I know you don't like yeah, him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. You're not but, a fan. You know, but that's what we're able to do as men. Just say, like, we agree to disagree on that one. Who cares? Absolutely. Right? Because, like, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you're a big proponent or fan of prong collars, but we use them all the time. I know. You know? But it, it because people ask me, and I say, if it works, go for it. The different... Different styles, different uh, strokes for different folks. Exactly, and if it works for you, then I got nothing to say about it. Fantastic, and and I will also say like because I, I think flexi leads suck for the most part. I hate them. Yeah, I still use them very rarely, and I use them for a really weird training uh, exercise that you would never imagine what I use right, them for. It's very but, specific. Yes, but generally speaking, I don't like them, or I don't like them for the most folks. But everything has its purpose, right? There, there may be a time when. I bust out a gentle leader and then I'll be calling Joel Beckman. Like, How do you use this yeah. thing? Yeah. It's, it's like, I could care. I, I just, it, it, if they were giving me money, it, maybe, it, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Press play, but get it like weirdly. It's like, <laughs> make us smaller. <laughs> just looking at the thumbnail. Of this dog is like floating there. Oh dude. This video got, um, a lot of love, a lot of hate. Right? Wow. Something you thought was funny, I'd go back, watch it, pull it out, put it in this video. So comment on your favorite clip, and that's it. Prince is about to run. Watch this dog. Woo! Dude. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. He's I like literally did nothing. Ferret. Prince he, runs by. Did you see that? He, he just he You're an evil himself. man, Joel. I'm a horrible man. We're going to get I one agree. spin. Did you see when he spin? I span, span, span. I don't know the word for that. Spun, he went and you're thinking about male female stuff. Oh, he's swimming and he's fully like can't swim. And then that's oh, oh. give any harder of a correction. He is giving himself, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. I'm looking all <laughs> doing funny stuff with my body. Um, guess watch him. They go, they go, whoop, they <laughs> come up. All right, that's all right thumb. And, uh, excuse me, pointer and thumb on the outside. Whatever this finger's called. I don't even know what this finger's called. That's your index. index. Okay. Go. What? Control your doorways. My own dog. Okay. Control your doorways. Okay, Prince. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, you're out, dude. You guys heard my yell. It stopped it. You, you've, got it you've got to have some poppiness to your knock it off. If and one of the reasons is? These Akitas, you know, they sit there at the RBF all day. You know, what is that? Resting bitch face. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have that. So they'll sit there. And, <laughs> and then you can get to right, like. Not funny. You can stop it. You can stop it. Um, we should watch the Garrett, the Garrett uh, what do you call it? One? Mask one? The one? Or the one where he puts on the gentle right here on the dog's face. Oh. Uh, you have to find that one. one. We can find one. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I like, um, you know, people, I, um. Hopefully that brings some levity. Absolutely. Not man. not to this podcast, to to my people watching where yeah. they're like, where they're like, all right, the guy's not all serious. Cause I get people are like, dude, you're so hardcore in your videos. And mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, yeah, maybe I gotta tell clients, like, listen, you gotta, you gotta do this, man. You gotta, you know, you gotta do A, B, and C. And I try to like, I like bring myself, I like I'm a little much in the videos because I gotta get them like halfway there. You know what I'm saying? I do. And well, I will also pause here, I think, and say, I, I think it takes balls to put yourself out there like that. Show, show Prince not listening. You right. Know what I mean, right, it, happens. Right, right, right. it happens. They're dogs. They're not robots. Yeah. And furthermore, like I said, even just having me on this podcast takes balls too, because, you know, I'll tell you what happened. You know, when I realized you had balls too, wow. you had thou who shall not be named on this. <laughs> You know, God forbid you have another dog trainer, regardless of if you agree with this training style or not. But I'm sure you got some That's love funny. and some hate for that. And because oh, yeah. I felt the same thing, too. I was yeah. the first one, I think, to broach that subject. You did. So there's no mystery. We're talking about dog daddy. 
I dog daddy was in town. He reached out to me, said, Hey, I'm in town. And we linked up for like four or five hours, talked yeah. off camera yeah. just to get to know each other. Um, and now I'm the devil, just so you're aware. The devil is here with you in your podcast <laughs> room because, you know, anyways, a lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. Yep. Supposedly lost a lot of respect in the dog training community because I took the time. You took the time, taking the time now yeah. to get to know each other. Yeah. Not, how should I say, like in person. Yeah. In person. Because it's one thing to see someone on camera. Right, the persona on camera, whatever. It's another thing to even when the cameras are not on, just have a yeah normal conversation, yeah, man to man, dog trainer to dog trainer, yeah. And I learned this a long, long time ago in the dog training world, police canine training. You'd see it, man. The clicks. Uh, th this department won't train with that department because this department thinks they're cooler than them and they're better, and these guys suck. And yeah, but we'll train with them, but we won't train. Come on now. And so I would train with anyone and everyone I could. Even the departments that sucked because you could still learn something. And I would always tell my guys, oh, man, why do we got to train with those guys, man? They're not as good as us. Yeah, well, you'll learn. I'm sure you will learn something. And even if what you learn is, I'll never do that. I'm yeah. not going to do what they're doing. Fine. At least you still learn something. You walk away knowing something. So even if you disagree with another trainer, that's fine. Like at least like, for instance, I don't use gentle leaders. But I bet if I hung out with you for like an hour and watched you use a gentle leader, I bet you could persuade me. You could show me. Even if I wasn't convinced, I'm like, I'm even more convinced now I'll never use it. But that's fine. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm open to the experience. And that's all I'm getting at is, you know, congratulations to you. More power to you to have the balls to put yourself out there, take risks. It's yeah. not easy. It ain't easy, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had Dog Daddy on um, right in the middle of that. Literally, he walked in, dude, and it was because it didn't air two days later or yeah, right in the middle. And he kind of told me some stuff that was recently happening. And I was like, wow. And then uh, and then we had him on and dude, I'll talk to anybody who wouldn't talk to anybody. Like, do you know what kind of loser like oh, I, it's like I do, I'm not I talking. I'm not I, I won't talk to that person. Yeah. How, how dare you talk to someone? That's how insane. dare you? And then but then you broke the mold, you know because then he was everywhere then everybody had him on you know people uh ivan bal I don't know, yeah his I know. Last name, it's hard balabavnov and i mean that with all respect i cannot say his last name he had him on and this is what a lot of people consider one of the most respected dog trainers around and anyways it, it's like you get over it how about that just get over it yeah you know? damn yeah. man damn yeah so hey yeah we're 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 happy you came out and listen you flew you flew out here for this for a variety of reasons of which I don't totally know. I, I, I mean, I, but I think a part of it, I think a part of it was, listen, I got, I got asked and, and like, I got asked by a peer. It's not easy. I don't necessarily want to, uh, f leave my family. Uh, but you came out be because you got, you got asked and you wanted to sit down with somebody and just like, like do the deal. I don't know. You lost well, me there. You asked me why, why I'm here. Yes. I think because, as I mentioned earlier, you had the balls to, okay. to, I don't know what it is. Like, like I said, thank you for extending the olive branch. That's it's not even saying. that. It's, it's, it's not like we were fighting or anything. It's just yeah, yeah. thank you for, what is the word I'm looking for? For having the strength of character mm. to say, and because I'm sure there's things we differ on. But who cares? We can sit next to each other and talk about it and laugh and learn something. Yeah. Like we can make fun of each other for the gentle leader, prong call or whatever, but yeah, we yeah. can have that conversation and learn and grow. And so when I saw that you had dog daddy on, well, yeah, that man's got balls. And then when you reached out where many, many, many others have not. Right, right, right. I'll give you another example. I was coming out to California, baby. I said, well, damn, if I'm going to travel all the way across the country. There's other dog trainers in California. Yeah. I might as well reach out to them and say, hey, I'm going to be in the area if you guys want to do something. And you know what I got hit with? No. A hard no. No. Not even a hard no. Hard no would be can. ballsy. Yeah. Screw you, Garrett. You suck. I don't like you. Ah, oh, you know, I'm busy and this and that. And that. Oh, okay, you're busy. All right. I'll give you like a whole month's notice, but you're busy. No problem. I got you, baby. No problem. <laughs> 
but hey, here I am, you know, and that's funny. So yeah, when you uh, right. reached out, I'm like, absolutely. And it's not easy to stop what you're doing. Right? Yeah. Fly all the way out here. I know. Put the business on hold, be away from the family. We know. Hey, and this is a, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but this is a communist state of California. <laughs> you know, I said I would never travel here. What are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> you're not kidding. No, man. Beautiful, beautiful kidding. country. I'm trying to get involved in the politics, but I was yeah, like, yeah. man. I know. Because I'm a, I'm super pro Second Amendment, and this is like the last place like I'm allowed to be. So I'm. I'm this is great. Yeah. Well, I love that you're saying that. It's true. You're in the right garage. You're, yeah. Well, let me tell you. You're with the right people. Let's tell you that. I mean, former police officer. Uh, I believe my, my firearm is my American express. I don't leave home without it. Not in California. So yes, I'm putting my own <laughs> personal life at <laughs> risk to come on your podcast. This I just hope great. you realize that. And, uh, yeah. So, but happy, to be, here, happy I, to be here. Happy to be here. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't mind talking a little we'll bit more about that, but we walk can. Around while you're here. I'll, I'll lend you one. A that's BB not, gun. A freaking BB gun. It's actually illegal in California to lend somebody. <laughs> can we strike that from the record, please? So can I uh so can I ask you some questions, but rather than a normal like human style question, I'll ask it as if I'm like from CNN or something like that. Go Does ahead. that work for you? Sure. Okay, anything so, anything works for him. Okay, so he's down with whatever. So let me let me let me position it like from from CNN. So are you a totally he wouldn't talk horrible to CNN, person sure. because you use e callers? Take it away. It's a crazy question. No, no. I love e collars. I'm a huge e collar proponent. And if you want the man, you know, let, let me help you with your question. Do you know I use e collars? Get ready, boy. Mm. They're gonna they're gonna ban you from YouTube right now. Uh oh. I use e collars on puppies. Oh man. Yep. Um. Um. Just I'm a bad guy. Puppies. And I do it all the time, and I'm proud of it. But it's it's not just it's like oh, that's it. And they're gonna take that sound bite, and they're gonna run with it. They're gonna run with it. There, I knew it. I knew that guy was a scumbag. It's just a digital leash. Would you put a leash on an eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve week old puppy? You better so they don't run out in the street and get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. They got to learn how to respond to the leash at some point, anyways. I would tell you a leash is more stressful to a puppy than an e-collar on the lowest, lowest, lowest perceptible level. And if properly conditioned, especially at a young age, they love the e-collar. I got some videos coming out now with, a, I want to say it's about a four-month-old Cane Corso puppy. And we are using the e-collar for the first time on that puppy. And that boy is loving life, loving life. Because on the lowest level, then know if you know this or not, it's not a shot collar. Yeah, yeah. It's, an e -collar. it's a tickle. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking. I know you guys. I'm saying to them, oh, right, it's right. a tickle. How dare you tickle a puppy? How dare you? How dare you feed it food and watch its tail wag? So anyways, I don't know what your question yeah, was. I but I, I actually didn't know. So I was watching some of your videos. and I didn't realize that. I had no almost nothing about this stuff. But I was. I didn't know about the that there's like more of a vibration and a sound in that people were putting it on themselves and being like, Oh yeah, it doesn't hurt at all. Now, granted you would probably agree that there's some degree like idiots that do a lot of stupid shit, but they also could misuse them, but done properly. It's a freaking amazing tool. Amazing tool. It's a digital leash. That's all it is. And just like a leash, you could do a lot of damage to a dog with a leash. You can use the leash to, bring the yeah, dog yeah. to a reward and they can love it you could also kill a dog with a leash so it's all how you use the same with your hand your hand can deliver food your hand could also do really bad and terrible things so it's all how you use the tool and i will also say this for the naysayers out there because it, I've, supposedly you're not allowed to use an e-collar on a dog until they're six months old do you know why no politicians i, I have no idea right. there's i don't know why it's not a law. Maybe in some countries or something there might be, but what is it that happens with a puppy the day they turn six months old that prepares them for the e-collar? They weren't ready at five months old. Right, right. At six months old, they're ready for it. What? What is that? Yeah. It's just the dumbest thing ever. So there's no manual on it. I mean, there is now because we do it, right? We have our courses. We show you how to do it. And uh, absolutely, I swear, listen up, folks. I tell people all the time, e-collar is an amazing tool. 
but that does not mean you just slap it on a dog and start pressing buttons. You're going to absolutely screw the dog up. We have a dog in our program right now. Amazing German Shepherd. I mean, this guy's a stud. What did the owner do before he got a hold of us? Right. Bought an e-collar. He was experiencing some issues with the dog. Puts the e-collar on. And this is what he tells me. He accidentally stimmed the dog on a level 100 out of 100. They hit, he went to max. I don't know. He didn't explain why he did it. All he said, it was an accident. And then now we're working the dog. I, I have a feeling the dog, for sure, it definitely felt a high level at some point. And now we're taking a lot of time to recondition the dog. Um, and by the way, that dog is hypersensitive to the e-collar. It's about a 75-pound German Shepherd, a little bit of working line in it. So you think it's a pretty hard dog. And, and it is. It is not the hardest dog I've ever seen, but it's a tough dog. That boy feels a four, a four out of 100. Yeah. So, and so, he feels a four, by the way. And he goes, what the hell was that? You know, that's yeah, atypical, yeah. but that's, it's typical of a dog that's had bad e-collar training. That is the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Is it, it too high? Yeah. That is, that is the, and there's trainers that do it. And that, that is a problem, right? Too high, too soon. And I'll tell you the number one issue we see with whether it's a dog trainer using the e-collar improperly or a civilian is that the dog does not understand what the pressure is and how to turn it off. It is absolutely right. unfair to put the dog under that pressure. Right. It is not fair. That would be like me telling you something in German. And I'll just assume you don't speak German. So I tell you in German, uh, pick up that bottle. Yeah, but yeah. you don't understand it. So yeah, I just yeah, smack yeah, yeah. the hell out of you. Right. It makes no sense. No, and, but then you don't pick up the bottle. So I smack you harder and right. I just start rolling up the level. I start rolling up the level, right. you know, and just slapping you harder or stimming you hard. It's not going to make you pick up the bottle any better. And then by the time we even, once you finally figure it out, you're not going to have this fun association with picking up the right. bottle. You'll be, oh God, this thing again, this thing again, where he screams at me in a language I don't understand and smacks me when I don't figure it out soon enough. That would be improper e-collar training. So our, kind of our golden rule is, generally speaking, you never overlay the e-collar on something the dog does not already understand how to do. And I mean, do it very good, very proficient. And even furthermore, they should know how to do it um, by hand command, voice command, and leash pressure command so that, God forbid, the dog fails to do it, you can help them turn it off. Because another golden rule we have, when you are conditioning the e-collar, by the way, is uh, once the e-collar comes on, it does not come off until the dog completes the exercise that you can get a good rep. You can get a good rep. That's all. Learning levels, by the way. Learning levels. What is a learning level? A tickle. And we, I, if there's nothing else that I'm good at, e-collars on humans. I You're put e-collars. I can't, I, I have used the e-collar on more humans than I think anyone on the planet. <laughs> and it's not to brag. I just don't know anyone else is doing it. Yeah, yeah. Every single one of my clients that goes home with an e-collar. Every single one of them goes through at least a 30 minute routine with me where we put the econ on them and I explore not only what their learning level is. Yeah. I go up to their corrective and I often do an aversive on them. Yeah. Multiple aversives because <laughs> there's so many similarities between training a human with an e collar and training a dog with an e collar. It is freaky, freaky. It's the same thing. The only difference between a human and a dog on an e collar yeah. is the human picks up on it quicker. So it might be a 30 minute session, maybe let's just call it that, to train a dog to at the end, figure something out. Yeah. You could accomplish about with someone who knows what they're doing, uh, like 10 or 15 minutes. I can get a human to do about five commands without ever saying a word Yeah, just through e-collar pressure and what you might consider food loring. Anyways, I, I, I love it and it never gets old. And we, I have changed a lot of people's minds about the e-collar when we finally put it on them. And they realize like, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's yeah. it. And I also, I also, every single dog that goes home, and I don't know, I'm just telling you stuff, just have diarrhea in the mouth, but it's good. I use the same exact levels on me that the the dog uses. Sometimes mm. that's a great because sometimes the dog takes low levels. Sometimes I have a bad day, like for me. Yeah. Because I want the owner to be confident on the number they see on the screen. And so I put the e-collar on me. So not just the owner. So it's usually a husband, wife, or something like that. They're gonna feel whatever their corrective level is. By the yeah. way, it's like a, usually a 35, sometimes 45, 55, sometimes less. And then after they're very, they, they've been in the mind of the dog. They've yeah. gone through the reps. They know what a learning level, a motivating level, an annoying level, a corrective level, and an aversive level. This is our system. We use yeah, a five-phase system. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that. Yeah, it's, our, it's just my way yeah. of communicating yeah. it. We do a five-phase system. 
then I put it on me. And I, okay, I'm going to, I try my best to channel how that dog acts, whether it's an overexcited dog or a really stubborn dog, whatever. And then the e collars on me at the same exact levels that the dog uses. And then I become, let's say stubborn and we do sits. I don't do a down, but I'll do a sit. I'll go on the place board. I will blow a recall multiple times. And I want to make sure that they are using it at the right level and at the right timing. Everything with e-collar is timing and levels. And trust me when I tell you, boy, they screw it up. And I'm just getting rocked for the first five or 10 minutes, either too low, often too high. And then we dial it in. And when they are just killing it, when they're just timing is perfect, levels are perfect, because it's very intuitive. We call it mother and father's instincts, right? What level should you use? I'll give you the parameters, but it depends. Kind of let the punishment fit the crime. Am I just refusing to sit or am I about to run out into traffic and get hit, hit by a car? <clears throat> Once they're proficient, right. then and only then do they even think about using it on the dog. And then when they are using it on the dog, we have a speaker box. I can hear exactly what they're doing. You're telling me you do this <clears throat> with every client? Every single client. Really? I, You know what? I'll say another world Guinness record. Here. That's great. You have to. You have to. It's it's very it's a very uh, well thought out system and I'm imp it's impressive. Yeah, well, we don't play around with that, man. Yeah, I'm, you're not messing around. I'm always about quality over quantity. Yeah. And I take my time with my clients because I want them to be, they're not even owners anymore when we're done. They're, we call them owner trainers. You are an owner trainer and you will continue training your dog going forward if you want them to be the best that they can be. I'm going to go on and on about that because I often say this too. I don't care who trains your dog. If you don't maintain that training, that dog will revert before I get down to the end of the street and make a turn. Yeah. Um, you have to maintain the dog's training, no matter who trains it. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is I don't think there's anyone on the planet that's taken more e-collar pressure than, than me. I please let me know who it is because I'd love to chat with them. I get fried every day, basically put it on me, on my neck, everywhere, all levels. Um, and again, just by the owners, every single owner that's ever taken a dog home from me, we put the e-collar on me and it's not just it's not just for two minutes. No, it's about a 20, 30 minute session of me getting zapped. Then we give it to the wife. They get a go, you know, and then anybody in the household who needs to know how to use the e-collar will not use that e-collar unless they use it on me first. So it's typically husband, wife. Sometimes there's like an older kid or, or grandma or whoever, and they're going to use it too. So I've been, You're I can't tell you how many times I've been stemmed by the e-collar. No, no, not like, I don't get any enjoyment out of it. It hurts <laughs> just as much now as it did ever, but I, cannot walk out of that house right. leaving them with a, such a powerful tool right. yeah. and them not be 110% proficient with it. How, how high have you got shocked? Um, so there's different types of e-collars, yeah, right? So it depends on the brand, right? Yeah. But I've taken a full 100 multiple, multiple, multiple times on like the, the e-collar technologies, mini educator or finger trainer, which is what about 90% of dogs use mm. should have brought an e-collar. Y'all yeah, have one. I would have worn one. No. Yeah. Oh man, we can have a party right here, but, <laughs> and then on the boss, <laughs> I've taken a 100 on the boss. Like, like, Bro, you're selling that. me. You're seeing uh, the, the you commenters have been trying to sell me now. Oh, well, here's why. No, no. I want you to finish your thought. Oh, I just to, to answer that question, anyway. I've taken the highest levels on every unit out there that I've had my hands on. Dogtra all the way up. E-collar Technologies is the most powerful unit. Let me tell you about that Martin system. <sighs> Y'all don't know about that thing. I mean. Will you lose, lose control of your fouls? It hit you so hard. Or what? Um, Close? I don't know. I've um, been tasered by, um, you know, in my police. Yeah. That That is a whole other ball game. Put some blood in your pencil? No, no, man. It just, it, it is, it is. But anyways, the Martin system, just for, in my personal opinion, if the mini educator, the one that a lot of people are using or a dog truck goes up to 100, 127, the Martin goes up to like an 1,000. It doesn't say that. It's just extremely powerful for very, it can go down very low too. And it's customizable, but that's for hard ass working dog. And it's for any dog really. But the, the, the people who use uh, police officers, military, and uh, folks in the, you know, sport world with really high drive dogs. They like that Martin system. Cause there's some dogs out there that they will yawn on a 100. Like, mm. That's all you got. So you need that more powerful unit sometimes. And I've taken, um, I don't even, I know I've gotten up to like a 13 or 14 on that. I don't know if I've gotten up. The 18 is the highest level on that. Mm. That's a monster. Anyways. So 
Okay, that's interesting to know. And then do they use them for horses and other things or other types of animals or just dogs? I don't know anything about that. That's where my, mm -mm. Can I don't you, know. Uh, uh, so can you tell me a little bit about the CNN? Like, or the, I wouldn't give you a little CNN pitch, but can you just tell me first about your background? Like, I know obviously you were involved somewhat in law enforcement mm -hmm. with uh, canine training. Can you just tell us like a bit of the dog part of your um, background? Especially as it relates to, you know. Sure, sure. I'll make it please. short and sweet because I don't want to bore anybody who maybe already know, knows about it. Uh, I was born in 1983. My father, uh, police canine handler since 1981, mm. right? So literally when I hit the ground, there's already a police dog in the house mm. from day one. It was just life. I didn't know anything different. It's just a police dog. I just thought it was the family pet. I mean, I knew what my father did. Um, and that was his lifelong career. And when they say when you're in police canine, it's not a job. It's not a, it's a lifestyle because you go home with that. Yeah. Dog. You spend more time with that dog than you do your own family. Yeah. Uh, when I turned 16 and I'll rewind, like the first time I took a dog bite, I was about eight years old. This is a funny story, but we were doing like some, my dad was doing some demonstration for kids in kindergarten or something. And normally he has like a, a partner with him uh, so that they can, someone can hide in the bushes with a sleeve. And I remember him telling me, oh man, you know, Man, my partner didn't show up yet or he's late. Hey, Gary, can you just grab the sleeve and go hide in the bushes and I'll send Pharaoh to go bite you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know how to do that. And he, this is the funniest thing. He goes, what do you mean you don't know how to catch a dog? I'm like, dad, I never caught a dog before. Even him, he's like, man, how have you not caught a dog yet? I'm like, I just haven't. And he's like, well, you're going to learn right now. Put the sleeve on, hide in the bushes. Just make sure you don't get bit. Mm -hmm. I'm freaking terrified because this is the family pet coming in the bushes. Mm hmm but it wasn't the family pet is completely He's, different animal because right, he right, was on right. he came in i'm like what the hell took a bite and i guess that was my introduction to canine then around mind you that's not all we did did he let go no i slipped the sleeve yeah oh. i knew like i've seen it enough times i never did it so i kind of knew what i was doing you just yeah figured it out on the fly but this is kind of what i mean like that was my life yeah and we would do police canine competitions uh travel with my father to those competitions and then when I was 16, I started doing ride-alongs with him. And my first ride-along with him, car chase, bailout, perimeter, bring the dogs in. And this is wild that I even got to do this. Yeah. We fudged the numbers. It doesn't happen 18. every day. No, no. It, loved it. Don't regret. It's the, no. the yeah. coolest thing. So some of my earliest memories at that age, right, going in with my father into a perimeter where even the regular police aren't allowed to go. Only SWAT or canine guys are allowed to go. Whatever, man. This is, this is what? Late? late nineties. You know what I mean? There weren't cameras yet. <laughs> it, and my father's working midnight shift. Cause you asked, how did I do that? You're supposed to be 18 to do ride alongs. Right. We would just fudge the paperwork and the sergeant would sign off on it. Sergeant knew full well what we we're doing, but Hey, whatever. Is this in Florida? <clears throat> Somewhere. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's fine. I get it. No, it, it used to be a Florida man, by the way. Yeah. City of Miami police department. Yeah. Oh. So this is not like, uh, well, whatever. It's a real police department. I should say it that way. I'm going to offend somebody saying that, but yeah, it's a legit agency. Yeah, legit criminals, whatever. That's how day one out of the very game. legit criminals. Yeah, bro, you're in my yeah. Miami. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how day one out of the gate. Hey, Gary, <clears throat> want to do a ride along? Yes. So we do a ride along, and it's man, we're not an hour in, and there's a car chase and a bailout, and I see my first dog bite. My first dog bite. My first walking with my father, seeing how the dog actually works, how they're tracking, how they're wind scenting, how they're sourcing, how they're finding the odor. And then how we deploy that bad boy to yeah. get the bad guy. And at 16 years old, I'm like, this is, this is amazing. This Bro, is so cool. I watched some of these dog bites. I, I got bit. I haven't been bit much, like not bite work, but like bite, bite and golden. And he just and he tried to bite. I ripped away and he got me a little bit. And I was like, that golden bit freaking hard. I can't imagine some of these guys getting hit by these dogs and bit like it, it, it's it out of control. Be, it's, it, it can be, it ugly. can be, it can be right. It's it not always depends on the dog. Depends on the right, scenario. Right, right. Um, we have dogs that fail to engage. We have dogs that when they bite, it's like just a pressure bite bruises right. only. Then we have dogs that have done damage like, like a shark bite. Yeah. Yeah. It, and because whatever, it's it's a creature that dog, that dog you know. just posted that video. I don't know if you saw it. Like, he was reviewing a dog, uh, a guy whose uh, hands on his back and the dog was biting. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an old video. Yeah. They couldn't get the dog to out, which oh. it's it's it happens. It happens, baby. Yeah. I just yeah. did a, a, a video about that 
a couple months ago because, you know, social media, the social media baby mama drama, boy, I'll tell you what, everyone has their opinion, everyone's entitled to it. And I gave my opinion from the police canine world. On that video? No, no, because I, I do not, I do not uh, like to. Right, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? Because you probably think, say it better than me. Well, no, no, I don't know what you're going to say. I think you're going to say, I'm not going to comment on like cops and like what they're doing like right now, like. Yeah, the job's hard enough as it is. That's what, is yeah. that what you're going to say or am I wrong? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And and we do like, but, because I'll do breakdowns on um, police videos where 90% of what they did is correct. And yeah. I'm proud of them. They did amazing. But maybe they got shot at or maybe they got shot. Yeah. And then I'll do my breakdown from my opinion on what they could have done better for, just for the next for the next go around. Right. But in, when it's just grossly negligent and incompetent, I am it. it Views or no views is not worth it to me. Those are my brothers, even, yeah. I'm, even though I'm retired now. They don't need any more shame thrown on them. At, they, they, let it come from somewhere I else. Agree. That's fine. That's fine. They're loyal. Well, yeah, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah, to throw yeah. fuel on the fire. Dude, that's yeah. so true. Like, I'm trying to think of an example of like someone who'd be getting ripped up, and I'm like, I'm not jumping in this thing. Like, don't like they don't job. need, yeah, don't it's it, all these. It, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, we got off topic. There was something we were going to talk about, but oh, no. Yeah. So I put a video out. Really meant it's completely harmless. It, so I think some of the videos I put out. We know might be controversial, but I would tell you 90, 95% of the time, no idea that it's controversial whatsoever. Just put out yeah. just something, and next thing you know, you've offended half, half the dog training community. Oh, sorry, I didn't know yeah. that. So in this particular one, I had made a comment saying, uh, in my opinion, did you know, I'm going to mess up my own, my own statement, but it was something to the effect of, did you know that most police canine handlers have less than 30% reliability with their voice commands alone when their police dog is under a high level of stress or in, in a high state of drive, roughly speaking. Yes. Key words there, less than 30% with verbal commands alone when the dog is in drive. And I stand by that. That to me is a fact in just from my little bit of experience. Yeah. And I pissed off the whole police canine training community. Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, perfect case in point, that video. And so anyways, yeah. it's just the truth. It's just the truth. When, yeah. and, and my answer to that is, that's why God invented leashes. Yeah. That's why God invented the e-collar. If your dog, if these police dogs were so well trained, and I'm not saying they're not, why then are we have a leash? Why do we have an e-collar? It's because I say in my, for, from my experience, or the way I like to verbalize it is, these are 700, 800, 1,000 horsepower engines in these dogs. Yeah. And sometimes the brakes just don't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can give the verbal command, but that dog's like in it to win it. And that's why most police canine bites are physical removals or what you might call a tactile remove. Most police canine handlers are not giving a verbal out for the dog to let go. They might say it. There's right, some right, classic right. ones out there. They're and the same way you say sit, clients say sit 10 times. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, oh, by the way, the point of my video uh, of yeah. me saying that was yeah. not to offend the community. It was to empower the civilian community, the rest of us who are dealing with just dogs in general, that, hey, even police officers struggle with their own dogs. So it's no wonder that when your pet dog sees a cat, dog, squirrel, whatever, a, you might have a hard time controlling your dog. That's a as great, well. that's a great point. And it's awesome to throw things like that in there. You and I have both seen how people, smart people, strong people, how much they suffer with their dog's behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it doesn't amaze me anymore, but everyone struggles with their dog problems and they, people need a, like not a pass. People need a, this is hard thing, man. Changing your organism's behavior is yes. never an easy thing. Yep. And there's a lot of like blaming of clients in the dog training world. And that's what I see. I see it. I see dog trainers. will put on the clients all the time and you're just not, you're just not doing it client. And I'm just, I, I'm telling you what to do and you're not doing it and you're not training eight hours a day. They don't ever say that, but you're not training all day. Um, but it's a it's a hard thing for a normal person to do to fix their dog or to change their dog. It sits easy, down's easy. That's that's barely training. Well, oh, and this is and I agree. And and well, this is what I always say. 
everybody in America can get their dog to sit in the kitchen for a treat. That ain't hard to do. I know. You know why? It's, it's yeah. when there's a knock at the door. It's yeah. when there's another dog. It's when you're taking your dog for a walk and there's a bird, cat, squirrel, food on the ground, whatever. Yeah. Then can you control your dog? That's true obedience. That's true obedience. And I say that's when even police officers struggle yeah. with this. So that's why we need to train, 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 train. That's why we do need these tools to help us control all that horsepower so we can get a steering wheel on it, so we can get some Brembo brakes. And when we need those dogs to be obedient, there is a way to demand that obedience, right? And in the case of police canine training, which is again, my background, we're talking in circles, you asked that question, but that's why like in police, the police canine world, we cannot afford to have a dog not listen to us. Yeah, We can't afford it. Someone's going to get hurt Yeah, real bad. And so, um, but I think it's sad that, I think it's sad that, um, that you're getting, you know, that, or you got that criticism from that video. Cause it is a fact, right? You add pressure to any situation and things are going to go wrong. Just like if you're you might be a great shot, but once the pressure's on, it's a totally, or even if you're shooting with basketball, right? You, you take that free throw shot and, yeah. and now, you know, when you got 60,000 fans or whatever. So, but I also like being critical of everybody, like being critical of Joel, Joel being critical of me to where it's like, if we're always just singing each other's praises, like, you know what I mean? I know that they think you should be loyal. Like you're, you know, the other police dog or police trainer should be, you should be loyal and take care of them. But at the same time, like you should be able to say something that's true without getting a bunch of shit. From your yeah. And I didn't, I didn't mean any disrespect by it other than it's a hard job. It's not easy. And it's just the truth of the matter. It's not talking smack at all. It's, um, I would travel the country teaching these classes. That's yeah. where I got the stats from. We have a room full of a hundred police canine handlers. I ask, Hey, how many of you can get your dog right now? Scenario guy standing in a bite suit, 15 feet away. He's doing jumping jacks. Your jaw, your dog is fired up. This is on a training field, by the way. How many of you right now, if you told your dog to down 15 or 20 feet away from this distraction, will do it on the first verbal command and hold it? And less than 30% of the room will raise their hands. It's not, that's like clockwork. You didn't make it up. Yeah. No, but you I, didn't mean, I the, see it. You I didn't see it. You don't, I don't need the you hands. Yeah, yeah, you see it and you got the hands. Yeah. Right. But then I'll ask them and I always find this interesting. Yeah. Now, if you have a leash on your dog, and you tell your dog to down and they don't down, how many of you can use the leash to demand that your dog's down in that given circumstance? Mind you, this is not shots fired. This is not a real subject running. This is not adrenaline pumping in the air. This is a training environment. Mind you, mind you, these are high horsepower dogs who want nothing more than to go bite that guy in the suit. So they're jacked up. We call it motor up, right? Motor's at 100. How many of you now can get your dog to down and then about 90, 95% of the room raise their hand. G good. Yeah. But then I, I target like, okay, what about you over there? How, how is it that when your police dog is on a leash that you still can't get them to down? And I, I know what the answer is. It's just a lack of training, lack of understanding. The dog not understanding what we call a correction with direction. The dog not understanding leash pressure commands, et cetera. But it just happens. It's not to talk smack about it, yeah. right? No, no. It's just, but, it's just yeah. what happens. I have a question for you. So what about, what about, um, so if I know anything about, a lot of sheriffs, police, like they're usually county or citywide, so they're smaller municipalities. So it's not state or federal. So is there like a large like canine across the United States, like an organization that handles that? It type varies, of stuff? right? Or like, or is every single department like doing their own thing with canines? Good question. In short, it's a little bit of yes, a little bit of no. There's organizations like the United States Police Canine Association that you can get certified in, that you can compete in. That's what my father did for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. Um, there are also agencies and states that have absolutely zero qualifications or standards or certifications doesn't exist. You can pump out, I was just somewhere, I don't even want to say where that you can have a dog on the street in as little as two to four weeks. That's absurd. That's a, that's, it's wrong. Wow. The minimum, the minimum in, so I'll give you Florida standards, 480 hours, uh, which is, I don't know, it's like oh, four wow. months, four months. And that's the minimum standards. Most agencies worth their salt will spend about six months of <clears throat> nonstop training, you know, four or five days a week, all day, every day before the, they can even consider that that dog team is ready to hit the street. And even then your, your training has just begun. You're now certified. You're good enough to get out there, but then the training continues all the way up until that dog is retired. Mm -hmm. But then there's other, again, agencies that are like, here's your dog. Good luck to you. Is there a good age 
to get where they should hit the streets? The dog? Yeah. It depends on the dog. Uh, some dogs, some is rare, ready to go, you know, maybe 18 months. There's some dogs that are ready yeah. to go younger than that. Um, 18 seems like a good age to me, yeah. not knowing a lot about the Two, two years months. old, a dog is fully mentally and physically mature, but it, it, there's some dogs that 10 months old, 12 months old, they don't care. Crazy, crazy Malinois that are just primed for it, you know, but uh, on average, you're looking at maybe the youngest a year and a half, you know. I'm seeing why when I watch your videos, I go, this guy knows his stuff and about everything, right? About random issues. I'm like, that's how I would do it. I got there from just being around a lot of dogs and being around a lot of animals and being around exotics. And it sort of absorbed into me. Then I started dog training. Then the numbers started hitting because I taught so many classes, blah, blah, blah. I'm seeing where, where you're at and why I think I, I think what, why I think what I think about you when I watch the videos, one, your dad deal, like you were weirdly around it. Like when most people aren't like, if someone said, why are you successful? Why do you know so much about dogs? You might be like, well, it's been a lot of dogs. Well, I'm a smart guy, blah, blah, blah. That, that kid thing matters, right? In the, yeah. And that's know. just the beginning, right? And that's just the beginning. Like, so the, I play, I was playing hide and seek once. I, I don't know, maybe we're 10 years old. We're playing hide and seek and my dad's police dog, I don't know if he was retired at the time or not. Cause he would always have the retired dog. This could be bad. You already know what's coming. Yeah. He would, when his, when his one dog would retire, he would bring in the next dog. So we were always having uh, two dogs in the house, right? The retired dog and the current dog. I don't remember if it was the retired dog or the active dog that bit the neighbor hiding in the bushes. We were playing hide and seek. Dog ran over. like, this looks familiar. Yeah. It, it wasn't a bad bite because uh, my neighbor was not, not, <laughs> not my neighbor was, um, not, it, was, it, it could have been worse, yeah. but because the uh, it was through a fence. Oh, okay. He was hiding in the bushes, but the dog came through the fence and goes, you're not supposed to be there. Bah. So, but it's just kind of, you got a police dog. Yeah. Stuff happens. But then anyways, just to round that out, because you asked the he question. He shouldn't have been on the other side of the fence. Yeah. Shame on him. No. <laughs> oh, he's lucky he was. But anyways, uh, at 18, I started um, my first big boy job. My father helped me get, he actually trained me to do it, was a explosive ordinance detection dog or excuse me, EOD handler. Mm -hmm. This is post 9-11, 2001. Everybody and their mom, you know, security. Yeah. Uh, so for the cruise lines needed EOD dogs to start sweeping all the materials going on the cruise ships. Mm -hmm. So from 18 to 20, uh, I worked EOD dogs. And that's a whole different, a whole different thing. So you sad. got like a whole different level of knowledge for a different task, which, mm -hmm. which just changes your, you know. Yeah, this. scent work, nose work. You yeah. know, how do you, how do you work a dog, keep them motivated and even though you're working the dogs, the only way to keep them motivated is to, to be training them and set up training hides. And my father taught me basically how to read the wind, how to read the dog, how to put the dog in a position to, to find the odor, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I, yeah, I learned a lot doing that. And then I was applying to become a police officer. I got in same department that my whole family worked at really. And then, um, this is the crazy thing. I'll just fast forward. I become a police canine handler about two, two and a half years into my career. When I get into the unit, my father's a canine handler in the unit. My stepmother is a canine handler in the unit. Mm. And I'm a canine handler in the unit. All three of us, mm. which is like unheard of. Yeah. Right. Uh, fast forward. At some point I become a sergeant. Then I become the sergeant of that same unit. At this point, my father had just retired. My stepmother had transferred out of the unit as some other high speed unit. Um, and that's where I got a lot of experience because now I'm running the unit, yeah. right? And um, is there something? Yeah, bro. It's 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 hey, it's, you it's, the it's super annoying. To the, to the Eric won't turn it off. I'm like, hey, Eric, can we shut that thing off? It goes off every. Uh, it goes off at five, but there's a time change. Now it's four. Yeah, so it's now it's four. So go 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 ahead. Yeah, so that that that's pretty much it. I'm I'm a sergeant of the unit. That's where I really really am able to make all the changes that I've wanted to make for a long time uh, because I had That's seen good. the unit go through all these iterations over now over 30, about 30 years. I've seen just hearing from my father and seeing it firsthand, all these iterations that the unit has gone through with different leadership. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't like where the unit was when I came in, they had a complete leadership change, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, 
so I came in and we had to like clean house. We had orders to like clean house. Uh, so a lot of people left, a lot of people got kicked out. We brought a lot of people on and then, um, I'm just very proud of the work I did while I was there. Uh, learned a lot, not only get to work mm -hmm. the dogs, all the training we did, but then I got to supervise, you know, major incidents where we would have sometimes up to eight, 12 dogs on the ground at a time looking for murder suspects, mm -hmm. armed robbery suspects. So there's a whole tactical aspect of yeah. it too. And anyways, yeah. just really where I cut my teeth. And then long, long, long story short, yeah, uh, we started doing, um, how do you call it? Um, consulting. We were doing consulting. Yeah. A, a right. friend of a, another police canine handler and myself started a business where we would do training and consulting for other police yeah. agencies yeah. to help them improve their tactics and help get their dogs ready for the street. And that's what I really, really enjoy doing. Still to this day, we do that. Uh, but we would get asked all the time, like, can you train, can you train my poodle? I'm like, no, I train, I train real dogs, okay. man. I train Malinois, Dutch Shepherd. Yeah, I'm not messing. Yeah. yeah. How, how am I going to, uh, train with some high speed unit over here? If they know I'm training poodles on the side, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I yeah. did that for a few years, turning people away, turning people away. And then long story short, I said, well, I took my first civilian client Yeah. and there's been all she wrote, you know, yeah. because I say for every police dog that needs training, there's probably 10,000, maybe a hundred thousand civilian dogs that need training. Oh know? yeah. So yeah. the numbers are giant. Yeah. And so there's not a lot of money in doing police canine training it just doesn't exist. You know, mm. agencies are pretty yeah. cheap. The budgets yeah, yeah are yeah. not there. And so anyway, civilians need help with their dogs too. And I don't mean that in, in just been in the law enforcement world too long. Cause you wouldn't call it civilians, just folks, oh, everyday right. folks need yeah. their dogs trained. They need yeah. their dogs trained. So here's what uh, is partly is interesting. And then you start, then me and you both started doing board and trains and we talked about the numbers and it's years of those numbers. And you're just going to event. You're just working with that many dogs and seeing that much behavior and seeing that much interaction and, and you and me like just learning almost from new, like I didn't read a book and then go, I'm going to do it like that guy. I didn't, I mean, there was YouTube 15 years ago, but I didn't do any of that. I just got my hands on a bunch of dogs and developed uh, my methods, which are different than a lot of methods. But here's mm -hmm. what, here's the interesting thing about your story in part. One is when you sa start saying there's like 10 or 15 dogs out there, that's when it kind of takes things to another level as far as your mind works. And I'll bring it back to me as a killer whale trainer. I was like, there's nine killer whales here. The killer whale in the back with her baby the killer one in front of you breaks in the middle of the show with 5,000 people out there and goes sits at a gate. Well, you then it comes back to you. You get in the water or not, I have to know all the whales. I have to know every situation and communication from those back trainers saying, baby broke to the gate. Well, maybe the baby's mom's out front. Am I going to get in the water when the baby's at the fence and the mom's worried about the baby, even though there's nothing to be worried about? And, and then you're dealing with all the social aspects of all these things and all these people and all this communication. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you're talking about now you're at 10 dogs cruising around with people and you're sort of managing that, it brings your dog training or your, and the social aspect of, of this dog affects this dog and this dog. It's just, it's a lot going on that most people don't ever really mm. experience. And I think that brings a trainer to another level of just not just understanding, but their brain being able to handle so many things going on. Yeah. If I, that makes sense. No, it does a lot because in your case with the killer whales, which is very interesting, very interesting. A wrong decision means, you know, yeah. you get eaten. Yeah. And literally, right? Yeah. You can get hurt real bad. You get hurt real bad. A and then in the police canine world, when we're running dogs, even in a training scenario, you can get hurt real bad real bad uh bro when the stakes are high yeah. trainers or people in life they become very good at their job mm, yeah. because that's how I just it love works you brought it up because i've never thought about that yeah because not from that angle right but when the stakes are high and you're looking yeah. for a murder suspect or someone that just shot at the police we know he's armed he's in the backyard and everybody too. is counting on you and you alone the the guy with the dog will figure it out you and then guess where we're putting all of our trust, all of it in the dog, yeah. in the dog. Yeah, a, a real. You know, careful what you say here. You, you know, everyone has different tactics. Police canine handlers, for the most part, if they know what they're doing, should be spending ninety nine percent of their time watching the back of the head of their dog. So you have to walk into a backyard, 
watching your dog because if you do it right, of course, there's all these scenarios, but right. the hope is, the plan is, the dog will tell you where the bad guy is before you find the bad guy. Yeah. And if you're doing your job correctly, again, there's there's situations where you could do everything perfect and you can still, um, you know, walk into an ambush. Let's call it that. But yeah, your job is to use the dog to locate the bad guy. And if you're doing it right, you should locate him well before you get into harm's way. It doesn't always work out that way, but that is the game plan. And so you really have to. And I'm telling you the difference between. You could call it just catching the guy or not catching the guy, or if you can go to the extreme and say the difference between life and death, the difference between you getting shot at or not getting shot at, or you entering that yard where you're going to get shot at or not, is all has to do with is something as subtle as this. You're walking along, the dog's doing yeah. its thing, and all of a sudden it goes, yep. yeah. if you don't catch that little half second change yep. of behavior, yep. you just miss the whole boat, baby. And now you can walk into a really bad scenario. And, yep. um, so yeah, you get yeah. very good at reading dogs. You you give you get very good at at training dogs. I mean, when you're when you're life's online, like I, I've said many times, and I've been around killer whale trainers, I've been around elephant trainers, I've obviously been around dog trainers, I've been around um, um, big cat trainers, right? All mm -hmm. dangerous stuff. Um, killer whale trainers, in my opinion, they can't train their own dogs. Okay, let's just say that. Okay, <laughs> first of all, they can't. They all call me, but whatever. They're the best trainers in the world. I, I put elephant trainers up there in the world, but as well because how dangerous they are. But it's because it's one, it's a couple of things. They can shape behavior really well, like operantly shape behavior, positive reinforcement, shape behavior. But they also, um, their life, it depends on it. And so, mm -hmm. like, when your life depends on something, that's my only point. When your life depends on something, you you better get you better get good at yeah, it. Yeah, you better get good at it. You're right. You're absolutely you right. Know what it reminds me of is when when you started talking about chasing these dogs with like 10 dogs out, like looking for a murder suspect, it made me think of the, uh, you know, have you learned from these animal behaviorists or, or you know, and, oh, and have you, yeah, have you, how funny is have that? Have you read, like, did you go to school? Like what's your background <laughs> with these dogs? Like, yeah, Garrett, you know what's what I mean? my certification? Garrett, yeah. Garrett, bro. Have you gone to, Are you have you gone to Karen Pryor's shirt? Academy yet? Oh, because God. what, because I'm not buying what, what you're saying, what bro. Are you? Yeah, Are you right. reading the latest literature? So no comment. We all get what we're getting no at here. The it's, more acronyms I see behind someone's, you know, dog training credentials, the more I'm like, <laughs> you know, next. That's that's yeah. exactly right. It's so funny. Like you and the history and the the dad and the teams, and then the sheer numbers of dog get aboard and train and the level of of commitment you have to your clients is literally a hundred X what what someone with the, the, the acronyms or the, I went to the school or whatever. It's, it's not even close. It's not I even the same a, yeah. ballpark. Yeah. I read a book like good. Good for you. I actually, see, I don't want to go down this road, man. It's not about, yeah. I yeah. keep things light and, and yeah, have I agree. fun and I not agree. talk smack, I agree. but it's hard. Sometimes Either you way. get hit in the what face a, with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Can you give me the uh, cheat sheet over there? We got bro, some questions bro. over there. Oh well, yeah, we just. I could talk seconds. to I could talk to Garrett all day, and we're, we're not going to well, do that. Why are you looking gotta, that up? We got to go eat. It reminded me of something which was. I think the difference between a good dog trainer and a great dog trainer. Yes, I'm interested. It's timing. Timing. Everything in dog training is timing to me. And I think what ends up happening is whether you want to call it intuition. I don't think it's that. I think it's just you just know what's going to happen before it happens so that when it happens, you already know what you're supposed to do to fix it. Uh, and so, yeah, just that is where the secret is because dogs live in the moment in the moment yeah right and you need to be able to correct that behavior or reward that behavior the moment it happens and if if you if it happens and you're like oh it did this and you're like well, what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to click with it you missed the moment it's already gone yeah. so we almost have to know what the dog's going to do before it's going to do it or help steer it so it does do it what we want it to do anyways i think that's where the secret sauce is is and that comes through time and repetition period, yeah you know I mean, sorry let me let me read let me get to a few comments they're about garrett so i said on last week we said who's someone's gonna be on the podcast whatever they said i would love to hear you talk to will atherton tom davis garrett or garrett wing and of course caesar milan although i don't think joel could contain himself as caesar was coming on okay this is bs dude the, people think i'm like okay here's the people that i wouldn't be able to contain myself if they came on on the show caesar michael Milan. jordan 
No. Listen, I like Caesar Milan because Caesar Milan went through hell and they put him through hell and he came out the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that that's why I'd want to talk to Caesar Milan. Here's the people: Michael Jordan, giant Michael Jordan fan, giant Dion fan, giant Tom Brady fan, and a giant um, uh, Charles Barkley fan because he tells the truth and he doesn't care. There's there's no actors in there. There's no there's no politi- There's a couple politicians I'd probably uh, be pretty excited about, but that's it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't, they're like, oh, Joel wouldn't be able to contain himself. What are they talking about? Okay. Did I, ready? did I? No, no, you're good. You're good. So we do a breed of the week, right? You've heard this. We've done a breed of the week. Yeah. So let's go. I, I want to pick it, but I want, I want to pick three or so. And I want you to narrow it down. Our breed of the guess. week is uh, the worst segment in the history of podcasts. So you can't be too good about describing what we're going to talk about with the dog. No, so no, you do your best. I want to do, but there's no we'll pr- preparation between this. So I was thinking either press a canario um malinois or what was the last one Bor- is it borbo no connie corso mm-hmm. what pick oh. pick one of the three okay are, malinois are we no? doing breed of, we're What's doing breed, breed of the week? week like we normally do breed of the week no you have to shit on it and then no no, no. let's just both let's just bo- sometimes breed of the week turns into shit i don't know shit. how this works so i'm just okay so he says a breed uh-huh. and then it often becomes where i'm like it's a horrible breed freaking mm-hmm. and then i like i like shit on the breed sure um, and it's just how it goes. So, sure. so, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you don't have pressure on? I don't know. This is no problem for me. Yeah. No, no. I, I'm just saying, I'm not going to shit on it because I, I'm just like a thing. I'm going to say what I think about it. Every breed has its pros and cons. Yeah. Which, which one? Dude, we should do Kane Corso. We got the Kane Corso okay, guy in know. here. I, I got a lot of history with Malinois too. So either one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Either one you Let's do Kane Corso. You talk about him. Then I'll talk about him. Sure. Uh, am I doing pros cons or doesn't matter? No, just uh, just, oh, just real quick, real him. quick. Yeah. Oh my god, y'all don't want to even know what I have to say about it. Love the breed, amazing breed. The descendant of war dogs, ancient war dogs, Roman uh, molossers that were put in the Colosseum to kill people and other animals and released on the Gauls. Right? Uh, we don't have videos of this, and there's not a lot of text about it, but the story goes. That and you can imagine it almost like an initial volley. I mean, I, I sometimes think about this like, man, what, how, how would this go down? So you got the Roman <laughs> freaking legion coming look at, up. Look at Gary, right? so into Then it. you've seen these, you know, think a gladiator or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then the Gauls come out. No armor. No the armor. The Gauls or whatever they are. You know, the barbarians. Oh, okay. Go you ahead. know, the they're guys with the war right? paint and they're yeah. coming out and they're I beating gotcha. their chest and like they're ready what? to kill. Yeah. And the the Romans are like, oh yeah, watch this. And they release. I don't know. A hundred. A thousand dogs? Yeah, the the predecessor of the Cane Corso. You're talking a hundred and twenty plus pound monster that they haven't fed and yeah, has been yeah, trained yeah, yeah. just to eat whatever. Right. Yeah. And they probably use slaves. Like, hey, practice on this, right? Yeah. This is not unheard of. Okay. Yeah. They're doing that. There's videos of that happening in South Africa. They're training police dogs to bite by using uh, criminals. Right. Okay. So you can pack picture what's happening a thousand years ago. Yeah. Is it a thousand years ago? How long are we going back? About, about 2000 years ago. Yeah, All yeah. right. So yeah. here it is. These guys are coming from the woods and they go, watch this, release the hounds. And I just would love to have been there and seen that what a hundred or a thousand of them look like as that first volley just coming in to disrupt the ranks. And then, then the foot soldiers come in after they launch arrows. I don't know. I've also heard stories, I say stories, um, that they would put like burning like oil or something like a not hitting them, but to take, so the dogs are running and they have this burning oil on them and they just run into the, and it's just lighting things on fire and it's just pure mayhem. Yeah. 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 And then I think they could also use them like you see in, in the, the Dutch police. If you've ever, if you have not seen this, it's super cool to watch. They will form rank, right? And this is for the hooligans or, or the, um, whatever they're calling it over there, but basically rioters. Yes. Okay. We don't do this in America now. But it is cool to watch the capabilities of dogs, okay? Yeah. And, I, and I've had a sit and I've talked with uh, the former canine commander of the Dutch uh, police. His name will come to me in a minute. It's yeah. Dick, Dick Van Leenen. And he talks about it. He's like, oh, yeah, we do this all the time. Yeah. So do what? You form rank. It's guys with shields, yeah. right? Riot gear. Yeah. And you got the hooligans or the, the, the crowd of angry protesters. Yeah. And they're throwing rocks and they're throwing bottles and they're taunting. And then there's some special command given, and then the ranks open up, boop, 
And what shoots through? Fur missile. And just grabs whatever. It's like fishing. That's what he said. It's like fishing, Garrett. 30-foot line, goes out, grabs the first thing, and reels him in, close rank, and then they take care of business yeah. with whatever that Malinois just brought back to them or Dutch Shepherd. Yeah. And I picture that's probably how they did it back in the day, too, because they had their ranks. They'd open ranks, release. Yeah. You imagine you release a Corso and then just reel in whatever you got. Yeah. So I don't know how they used them back in the day, but the point is that's what we have now. Awesome dog, right? No. Oh. Who needs that? Who needs that in their suburban neighborhood? And I know I'm going to offend everybody because, well, you have one, <laughs> Garrett. California, bro. You can find everybody. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go so, ahead. yeah, if you can't have a gun here, then get a Corso, I guess. But so we have one, my oldest dog, um, Zephos. He's going to turn 13 in December, which is unheard of for a Corso. Love that. Dog. Yeah. He's everything a Corso is supposed to be. And that was my first experience with the breed. Because about 13 years ago, you couldn't find them. Nobody knew what it was. There's a lot there of them weren't now, really any, bro. bro, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. So we've been very experienced with the breed for a while. And then how we came across Thanos was we were just training dogs, training dogs. And a client, was, oh, can you train my course? So sure. So we train it. I trained Thanos when he's like eight or nine months old, returned it back to the owner. Amazing guy. Mm. The guy works like 18 hours a day every day. He calls me up like three, four months later. He's like, Garrett, man, I love the training you did with Thanos. He's a great dog, but it's just not fair, man. He's cooped up in a crate all the time. I work six, seven days a week. Do you know someone who would adopt him? And I'm like, bro, say no more. We'll take yeah. him. My wife loves Thanos because she's a sucker for bigger, beefier dogs. Anyway, so that's how we end up getting Thanos. And we start making videos. A lot of videos go viral with him. He happens to be a very good looking dog. And excellent example of the breed but it's a lot of genetics in there and a ton of training and that dog is extremely socially sound environmentally sound and now the, here comes the problem everybody and their mom has a corso yeah. everybody and their mom knows someone with a corso and even worse everybody and their mom wants to get one having had one now for 13 years let's just say eight years ago if i were walking Zephos around, nobody would know what the dog was. Or they'd ask, yeah. what, what is that? What is that? Now everybody knows what they are and everybody wants one. And I say more power too, I guess, but I always say, look, it's a free country, do whatever you want. But I don't think 99% of people should own a Corso. And then, you know, there you go, burn my house down because most people can't handle that much. Most people can't handle their 30 pound yeah. whatever. Yeah. How are you going to handle 120, 100, 160 pound? Because they're they're kind of overbreeding them. Not okay. they are overbreeding them, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, and now really? we have 160 pound corsos, which is outside the the breed standard. Whatever. I don't I don't really care. My point is, you can't handle your 30 pound dog. You can't handle a 120 pound corso. What are you going to do with a 160 pound corso? And not just that they're getting bigger, but the temperaments are garbage. Because they're just, it's rampant breeding. No one's taking the time. They're just breeding for looks. They're breeding for size, putting temperament on the back burner. And we are getting, and it's not just me, because I've talked to other trainers, where they're getting their dogs from across the country. The Corsos are coming out with a lot of temperament issues, right? They're just, they're uh, not confident, overly aggressive. And even if you bred a really sound Corso that was to the standard, temperament-wise, they are be careful what you wish for meaning it could be very confident it doesn't have any genetic issues it's still a 120 plus pound dog that once once i call it the light switch gets flicked it can happen anywhere between six months to about 12 months old sometimes a little it took thanos he's a late bloomer yeah. 18 months old give or take it switched and it went from i'm cool with everyone to like who are you at the back gate bro i will kill you yeah. And so everybody wants that until you got that. And now what you have is in a gun without a safety hmm. with people who don't, again, know how to control all that dog. And it's so there's a, a woman who's reached out to me a couple of times and we're going to have her on our podcast. She's actually up in North California. I was going to try to visit her while I was here, but it's like 10 hours away. That's California is huge. So yeah. <laughs> it's out of control, man. That's all I can tell you. It, it, it's just, it's, it's not I even a problem. It's I, a pandemic, man. I didn't it's know. I want one now. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's wow. the thing, man. So here's my conundrum. You ready? Yeah. This sucks. I deal with this every day. We talk about it. I think about it. I talk about it. I talk about it with my, my family and, and my employees. It's the top, it's the constant conversation lately. Anyways, lately, let's say the last three to six months, because it's hypocritical of me. They're very hypocritical. Well, Gary, you make videos with the Corso. You, you oh. promote it. You put it out there. I don't know how responsible I am or not. I don't know for the Mm. everyone wants one. I think it would still be this way regardless of my, my videos. You're somewhat responsible, I, I, but I, you yes. don't need to feel bad about it. Ah, well, but I, it's, it's awkward because here I am making, it's hard for me to even verbalize because I struggle with this. Huh. I make videos with this. Yeah, guy. I guess so. Thanos is awesome. Yeah. You see him there with my here. here perfect. You started this yeah. podcast with my seven year old 40 pound daughter Walking 120 plus pound corso. It's alluring to yeah. see that. Oh, I'll go, just get one. I'll just, I'll just get, get one. one. Yeah, it, perfect. Yeah, that's no, how that's they come out of the point. box. That's a good point. And, and it's, it's, I am accidentally yeah. giving the wrong message. And it then, doesn't, so then, so then check yeah, this out. It matters. It's worse. It doesn't matter. This is where yeah. it gets worse. Yeah. We put that video out. It's what we do, though. It's what we do. Yeah. But then I'll make a video or I'll come on a, po a podcast like this and say, they're amazing. Don't get one. They are too powerful, yeah. too much dog for you. I'm looking right in the camera for this. And then it's just like you said, well, I want to get one now. They want that forbidden fruit. So I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. The more I say you shouldn't get one, the more they want to get one. <laughs> so I'm screwed. I'm screwed. And now they're everywhere. They're so many. And now when I take Thanos out, and this is now I'm speaking from like real life experience that happens every day. If I take Thanos out, Again, seven, eight years ago, nobody would know what that dog is, my oldest. Now I bring Thanos yeah. out. Everybody knows what it is, and everybody wants one, or everybody has one, or they're thinking about getting one. And then they will ask me, not even knowing that I make videos. I'm nobody. I'm just a guy yeah. with a dog. And they go, oh, man, that's exact. Honey, honey. This happens all the time. Honey, that's the dog I told you we need to get. And she looks at it. And usually the, the wives are like, yeah. hell no. Yeah. And the husband's like, yeah, this is what we need. And then they say, what, you know, you own one. What do you think? I go, don't get one. Do not do it. And they're like, why? Girl, and then do you I know who I am, bro? I don't, I don't say I know you don't. I'm just but saying. I, anyways, it, it doesn't matter. But then uh, you see it happen right before their eyes. I'm like, it's too much dog for most folks. I don't think you can handle it. Blah, 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 blah. And then more you tell them that, they're like, yeah, that's exactly why I want them. I said, okay, bro, <laughs> here we go. And now the shelter's. Or this is what I was getting. They're absolutely overloaded with corsos. Really? Overloaded. Oh, wow. See, I don't want to spill the beans here, but I'll say oh. it now because I'm I'm West Coast Connect Corso Rescue. We're gonna have them on our podcast. Please feel free to have them on here. The woman who owns that, I've been co conversating with her since about February of this year. She said about don't quote me on these numbers, but roughly speaking, about three to five years ago. When they started this rescue, they would get one call a month for a rescue here, there, or wherever. Hey, I got a course, so you know. Blah, blah. Now she gets up to a hundred calls a day, a day. And then you get situations like this. While I was standing by in the wings to get on your lovely podcast, I got this message on Instagram. You can't make this stuff up. I'm gonna just pull it up so you can see. This is real life. This is what happens. It's crazy. I just have to find. It. We get too many messages, but. It's someone on Instagram reached out and asked if I could help them adopt out their Corso. But yep. it's not as simple as that because, and I'm looking for it here because I don't want to misquote or say anything. It basically says, I got a Corso. I adopted it from a shelter. We took it home. It's tried to eat everybody. We don't know what to do. Can you help? Yeah. And it's like, it never ends. Yeah. It's bad enough to have a dog that's out of control. Compound that with all the genetics and the physical power of a Corso. It is, they are, and I'm not talking about about this. It could be any dog. It's just the current fad seems yeah, to be, yeah. you know, we could have the same conversation <clears throat> about Malinois and how they're too much dog for most folks and blah, blah, blah. But we could. Sorry that, to, that, that's sorry to other... go off on that little tirade, but it's like. Your tirades are the best because oh, you go off. You know, you're going to be just, just Joel's is like, 
the dog no. is darker color. I'm not even doing my freaking. Oh, yeah. Was this week, supposed bro? to be like, you got to put me on a timer. I'm going to say, Gary, you 30 no, seconds. No, yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. that, that was great. No. What? No, no, no. No. Let's you be done with Bird of the Week. You can't follow that. I can't follow, can't follow the Garrett on Connor, Connor Corso. He, he, I've trained a fair amount of them. Not even a smidge of what you experience. It ain't even close. It's nothing. But here's here they they come to me and they have a they, they're coming to me for a reason, right? Dude, they are all I, I I shouldn't say I mean all of them dogs come and there's different reasons for them having aggression or reactivity. There's always different reasons. Like there's all these <clears throat> it's it's um uh, protection. It's, it's, it's resource guarding of the owner. A lot of it's not with Corsos, but a, a lot of it's resource guarding of the owners, not pure protection. It could be fear. It could be under socialized. It could be, uh, all these things. The Corsos that come, I'm like, there's always this giant protection aspect to mm. them that is never not there. Like I'll get other dogs and I'm like, no, no, your dog is resource. Your dog is not protecting you. You are, a, you are their resource. And they're telling these people to get out of here so I can go about my business with my mommy. There's two different things. The Corsos are like, no, no, I'm fully protecting this person. Like, am I, am I, am I right or am I wrong? There's always seems to be a, at least some protection aspect to it. They are extremely territorial. And yes, I would for sure say they're very protective of their pack. The problem with that is, is, you know, they'll bite first and ask questions later. And that's what I'm talking about. That switch gets flipped. The best way I can describe it is before the switch is flipped, let's just call it off. It's off, right? Dog's born, eight right. weeks old, right. friendly as can be like any other dog. And, and this is mostly for the males, right? I have more experience with the males, so I can't say this about the females. I don't know if it's actually true or not on the females. But at some point, I'm sure it is, by the way, with the females. I'm sure it's the same thing, just maybe yeah. not as intense. I don't know what it is, but the the the... The testosterone hits the system right. and the switch is flipped on and it literally happens seemingly overnight. You can, and I've heard the stories, I've seen it firsthand happen with my dogs. Anybody can come in your house. Yeah. Four or five, six month old puppy, a Corso, happy to see you. Then the switch is flipped. Let's just call it, it happens at 10 months on this particular dog. Yeah. That person comes in the house and you see a side of your dog you've never seen before. You didn't train it. Just boom, it charges that front door like it's ready to kill. If you see the videos of it, they're just blasting through front doors, blasting through windows, trying to defend their turf from, because yeah. everyone's like, yeah, that's what I want. The mailman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Jeff, famous Uncle Jeff, right? Your drunk uncle that, that only comes over for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he goes out, has a few drinks, comes back in. Dogs don't like in. drunk people. Oh, well, correct. <laughs> Definitely, and 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 Uncle Jeff especially, you yeah. know. And I'm just they throw their hands in the way, or they so. they get up, they move around weird. It's just too much dog for most people. Okay, is what I'm getting at. I'm I know. Yeah, go you get one. Me. Yeah, you're. Uh, you're no, the this is what I will say. Though. Speaking of, this is what I will say though. Regardless of what breed you get, but especially if you get a Corso, training, 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 yes. and socialize, socialize, socialize. And nothing makes me more sick to my stomach when I see those videos of. I've seen it with Malinois. I've seen it with Corsos and the owner at that young age, four months old, five, six months old. And they're encouraging the dog to be wary of strangers. Lord Dude. have mercy. Yeah, be yeah, careful yeah, yeah. what you wish for. You are creating you a monster. You don't need to do it. No, it's you gonna, need a great dog. And then when it kicks in, it'll come naturally. It, it, yeah. It'll kick in and make them great till that point. This is from Mr. Dynamart. I'm sure, I'm sure it's Garrett wing. He's the only guy I've heard Joel speak positively about, apart from Caesar Milan. I also follow Garrett and think he has a very similar no bullshit mindset. If I'm right, I think I'll be an absolute awesome podcast. He's so, a soothsayer. I had that one up. That's cool. Oh, you did? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were they were hoping it's you. And um, I think I spoke positively about other trainers. I don't think that that's totally true. Y'all, it's 100%. Oh, yeah, this guy knew, bro, this guy knew you were here. That's crazy. Yeah. How, how old are those? This one's, this one's from two hours ago. Huh. But how do they know? That's they must you're have seen find, you. You're gonna find out. No. Uh, well, well, let's ask them no, right now. I, I did some uh some sh what do they call them? You stories. Did a, a couple stories. Oh yeah. That's but I didn't say you and I left it eight. Hey, so well, I gotta do my part now. I hadn't I, I would I, all I left it was I'm here to see someone special. 
who's in the dog training community. And I looked at that. And they must have connected. The they, they, they see the they saw the background. No, you said San Diego. Well, I would say, hey, I'm San Diego. I'm oh, here, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, it's 100 American Standard. See, K9. They know. They know. He's in San Diego right now. They know. They're tracking. They're tracking you. I like that one. Um, I like how Joel. Cla oh, that's a whole different. Um, we can bring it up. Are donuts um, desserts or are they for breakfast? It's for for cops. No. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too. Why we are you defensive, man? Bro, oh, yeah, yeah, right, we, right. Hey, what, what? Oh, he actually is the guy to ask, I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, last week we went off on donuts, how much I love donuts. And some, and I said, like, I'll eat them man. at night. And then somebody, right. and then he, and then the, the, the guy said, donuts are for breakfast. And then it got on a whole thing. And so I was seven donuts are good. At that's what I'm saying. This guy, someone, someone else said they're for breakfast. I said, no. Do so you want to hear a funny story? Yes. Coming from a police officer, we're talking about donuts. That's why I thought you That's funny. No, I didn't even think of that. So picture this brand new super rookie. I'm 21 years old, literally gets sworn in. It's a hurricane. I don't know what hurricane it is, but it's going to be around 2000 and three. Yeah. Yeah. I, 2003, I 2004. Yeah. Some there. hurricane comes through South yeah, Florida. Yeah. And it wasn't a crazy one, but it, it, everyone was freaking out. And so they go do something called Alpha Bravo. Everyone has to work, right? You get called in, no days off. You're working 12-hour yep. shifts back to back. So we had literally just graduated the academy, me and my class of about 40. We got uh, me and uh, another trainee from that academy class got hand-selected to basically be the errand boys for the chief, right? They say, hey, you and you, don't screw this up. Go up to the chief's office right now. And we're freaking out. Oh, my God. We're not, we don't have badges yet. Uh, we have guns, but we're not allowed to do anything. Because we have not been officially sworn in. We're up there in the emergency operations center. There's the chief, the assistant chief, all these majors and all this craziness going on. And I didn't have the balls to do it. But the guy I was with, shout out to John Sadak. He goes, hey, watch this. Hey, uh, <clears throat> it wasn't the chief, but it was the executive assistant to the chief. Hey, excuse me. Uh, if we're going to be working for you all and you know, being out there on the street and running errands for you, uh, you think you could swear us in? That's a great idea, man. We got sworn in right then and there, just the two of us ahead of everybody else from our class. Sorry. Yeah. So we get sworn in right then and there. And they said, here's the keys <clears throat> to the chief's car. If we need something, you go get it. Just be on call. If we call, you answer whatever we need, which is going to be a little errand, you know, yeah. whatever. We just get sworn in. They give us the keys to the chief's car. But everything's closed. And he's like, you better go eat something before it gets too late and the storm gets here. We get in the car. We pull out of the, the back gate. Yeah. The only thing opens, Dunkin' Donuts, baby. I oh, ain't been yeah. sworn in an hour, and we go You're to Dunkin' donuts. donuts. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry to build you all up for nothing, but, yeah, I had donuts on my within the first hour of me being Dunkin sworn donuts, in as a police good. officer. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. What's your favorite donut? Coffee roll. Oh, bro, you're bringing random donuts into here in the mix. Do you like, I don't eat, even know what that is. We eat the old-fashioned soup. We eat whatever. No, no, no really. one, no one eats those, Eric. No, Garrett Wing, dude, you're talking about him walking the county. Oh, he even knew the video I was talking too. about. Yeah, yeah. I so that. I said I like this video of him, and then I, I last week's podcast, oh. and I said, um, I'm not going to give any hints, but he was walking in a distracted area or something like that. It was the video I liked of uh, your daughter. Like, but but he thought it was the video which I also saw where you just. Put the dog in a down outside of somewhere and go. But in, any any comments that you were in, I just tried to pull. Um, I didn't see that last one. I got one. a couple. So this one is a uh, black nose says talk went from dogs to Mike Tyson to donuts to evolution and God. I love it. That's our podcast. That's, yeah, right. that's what happened. Yeah, that's. And obviously for the folks at home who don't believe it. It was like, hey, you you want to come on uh, the podcast? I'm like, yeah, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. Figure it out when you get here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. And, I was, and then I have people on my team. What are you all going to talk about? I don't know. Figure it out when we get there. It's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's good. Keep it loose. I think it's good. We, we do the podcast we want to do. It's not It's not all dogs, dude. You want my dog stuff. I got thousands of hours or a lot of hours of videos out there. I think what people forget is like we're dog trainers. But, but like, yeah, we have a life, you know, we do yeah. other things, you know, you got to take a break from it sometimes. So we talk about parenting a fair amount on here. Uh, we just find ourselves going there. Three kids, three kids, two mm. kids. And like the, the sort of the <clears throat> parenting's hard male, re, male role model in the life. And like, kind of, there's a lot of, uh, similarities to the dog stuff. Listen, your dog, 
um, at a, after a certain age, I'm like with certain dogs and certain clients and in certain videos, I'm like, it's enough. They're not, not doing the behavior. <laughs> like you're not requesting behaviors with this particular dog after this age, train them the behavior. And listen, don't ask the behavior if you don't want to follow up with the behavior. Like we're not asking, we're not begging for yeah. recalls. Like we're over that dude. Like now my recall method is different than a lot, but, uh, or, or any behavior. We're not asking these behaviors. run them, play with them, love them. And then when you ask something like, like we're doing it cause your dog is running your house. Mm. Like this isn't a request. Yep. That's my so thinking. We'll sometimes get folks ask us questions, um, through our membership or, or whatever, but clients, customers saying, Hey, you know, I'm having this situation with my dog and I do not anthropomorphize dogs. I don't like doing that. However, I like to sometimes throw it back yeah. to, uh, this is a great one. Yeah. I have two dogs, regardless of age, breed, and in the household, they're, they're constantly getting into it. And the older one or what yeah. the younger, whatever there's one in particular, the Corso, the 10 month old female Corso loves to steal the toy from the older dog in the house. And then they get into a spat. And how do I fix that? I'm just going to use this as one of many, many. Yeah, yeah. And I say, yeah, what if it was a five year old daughter that constantly kept stealing toys from your seven year old daughter? Yeah. And then you're, you, what would you do as a parent? You just allow that to happen. You just let, and then, and then when the seven-year-old gets pissed, the seven-year-old daughter walks over, I just use my own daughters, for example, do we let the seven-year-old walk over and just pull the hair on the five-year-old and bite her and scratch her and smack her around? And you just watch. Yeah, I don't know what to yeah. do. What do you mean yeah. you don't know what to do? What would you do if your daughters were clawing each other in your living room or stealing toys from each other or, or, or pushing each other around? Would you not intervene as a parent? And it's like, Owners of dogs sometimes are afraid to intervene. They don't know how to correct their dogs. Right. They're afraid to do it. And I don't know. I always tell them, I don't need to necessarily show you how to love your dog or no. treat your dog. That's Y'all so do true, that bro. very good. That's not the problem. No. Yeah. yeah. It's just having That's some rules problem. and making them stick to it. Dude. You don't need to touch a dog to train a dog, though. Right. What? What no. do you mean? No, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, when when dogs fighting in the house, like there's one, there's, and then this is easier said than done and you have to be specific with clients. But like, I'm like, first I got to get the attitude through to them. Like, like you run this house. Mm. You are running this house. It, it, it does matter who's here and who's here in your house, right? Between dogs. But like, you're here. Like it, it, it matters. But listen, you get, you're here. You run it all. Like this dog's doing something that dog, and we have to go through scenarios with the clients because things vary. Like this dog shouldn't just be stealing from this dog. And this dog shouldn't just always be like dominating this dog. Like it's like kids, like you said, but none of it matters. Get your, grab that dog, get your ass over here. Pardon my language. You rules. get over here and Oh, this one doesn't get it. Then you go back, you grab the dog, you sit him down and your dog needs to pin its ears and go, geez, mom. Like, yeah, dude, I, I, I didn't know you could be like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. I can be like this and I'll do it all day if it yep. takes all day. that's and, and the beautiful part is if you do rise to the occasion, then you stop having to rise to the occasion. Yeah. Once you set the tone and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, dogs figure it out real quick, real quick. Uh, and I love the analogy you use. The analogy I use is treat your home like a bar and a restaurant, just for argument's sake. Who's the owner of the restaurant? Who's the manager of the restaurant? And who's washing dishes? Mm. And the dog is your dishwasher. And I don't mean that by any disrespect no. to someone washing dishes. I'm just saying there is a totem pole. There is an order. There is a hierarchy. And your dog just simply needs a job to do. And I would say, hey, would Gordon Ramsay allow the dishwasher to come off his dishwashing station, run to the front of the house and start throwing dishes at the customers coming in the front door? What's the dog equivalent of that? You told your dog to place. 
it comes off of place or a sit stay or a down stay and there's a guest coming through your front door and it runs over and tries to attack them it it it, it challenges them it chest bumps them it's biting them yeah it's like what are you doing that's not your job go back to your dishwashing station and that's why i say too i would love i love the day that we can actually plug in a little neural link and ask the dogs hey who runs this house yeah, yeah. So I do. This this is the idiot just feeds me every day. <laughs> this one scratches my belly. She's pretty good at that, but yeah. this is my she, house. She touched she right? strokes so me all day. Different dogs will say different things. I just unplugged this by accident. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it depends. I think it depends on the dog. But um here we'll get it. Yeah, I messed something up here. But anyways, what I was getting at, um, I wanted to ask this is the only question I wanted to ask you, just because it's kind of fresh in my yeah, mind. Hold it, hold okay, talk. Check, check, check. Now I think we're working. Good. Let's not try. Yeah, yeah. sorry. It, it weirdly, it didn't even come out. It just turned. Go ahead. So here's the one and only question I had for you. Yeah. I think you already answered it, but I want to just be very specific. Does dominance exist, exist. in the dog world between people and dogs? Sure. More specific. That's what. How about mean. dogs and dogs and people dogs? I yeah. want to hear both. Well, dogs and dogs, absolutely. Are you sure? I'm positive because uh, a lot of people don't believe that. Yeah, because they're crazy people. So <laughs> the dog and the dog and people thing is 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 not more complicated. But we, if we want to call it something different, I made a video years ago about this. I don't give a shit what we call it. Call it whatever you want, but it exists. Whatever we're calling it, because what's happened now is the word's been co-opted. And mm. they go, it doesn't exist. There was a book written by David, whatever. Yeah. And so I made a video going, great. I don't care what we call it. You you run that you want to call it being the boss. I don't care what you call it. It it just the, personally, I don't care what you call it. Now, I don't want to kowtow to, oh, we're going to eliminate words because people yeah, said to right. eliminate words. That's the worst thing. But it absolutely exists. And it solves, I'll tell you this. And you may, you may not like Caesar Milan. You may love Caesar Milan. I don't have a clue what you like. I like Caesar Milan. He, that guy, that guy, and I tell clients all the time, I go, you know what? He pretty much had it right the whole time. Like you want to solve real behavioral problems between dogs and stuff, run the show. Mm -hmm. Like he, he came into it. He said that there were times where he didn't, at times we eloquate, eloquated it. Is that a word? A, good it's good. Well, and sometimes where he didn't, but he kind of had that whole thing right. And then they came for him mm. and then they said, well, we, anything he said, we have to go against. And, but he kind of had that, had that whole thing, right? Like, like what I just said with grabbing and dogs and like, I run this house. It, yeah. You know, they're, that's they're what I think. For you guys too, though. It's just, and we it's don't just, get I don't even know how it's a conversation. Like, oh, isn't it weird? It, it just, it's just, it like hurts my head. <laughs> yeah. And so, and this is why it came up. I actually, cause this is something yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. And I hate to bring up old news. Cause I didn't even think this was a conversation that needed to even be had. But it absolutely blows my mind that anyone would ever consider that there is no such thing as dominance between dog and dog to dog or right. dog to human. Right. It's like, what planet are you on? And I don't like to argue with people. I just was just like, what? And yeah. then so, but I yeah. where it comes in to just to tie it all in. I'm in this Facebook group where they're talking specifically about the Connie Corso breed. And some post comes up like a week ago and the, the image of the post says dominance theory debunked. Oh, that's the term. And I went and I read this thing and I'm like, why am I reading this? And I'm like, how, this is no way, no way this is going to say what I think it's going to say. Long, 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 long post that supposedly debunks I know. dominance. I know. Oh, and the big sticking point, I think it's to your point about some book that was written. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll just paraphrase it. That roughly speaking, some study was done back in the late 30s, early 40s. With wolves. Right. Wolves right. in captivity. Right. And wolves in captivity, 110% show dominance. And then they said, no, 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 no. But it got debunked because that's only how wolves behave in captivity. But of course, if you let wolves out into the wild, they work as a team. There's no dominance bullshit. <laughs> and then I said, that is the dumbest. And then it goes on and on. I'm like, this is the dumbest thing I ever read. Because we're going off of, we can all at least agree, dogs and wolves share 99.9% .9 same genetics, very similar 
let's just call that what it is, right? They're not the exact same thing, but very similar. So if the argument is that wolves only display dominance when they're in <clears> captivity, <throat> but they don't display dominance when they're in the wild, fine, if you want to believe that. What would you call a dog that lives in your home, whether it's other dogs or other children, they're in captivity. So if wolves will display, display dominance in captivity, wouldn't a dog do the same thing in captivity, which is your backyard, your home, whatever you call it? So it's like, that's that's just dumb right there. And then where it concerns me is, I wouldn't oh. even be talking about this if it wasn't posted in the group that it was posted in, which has a lot of people in it. And it's specifically about the Corso, which is one of the most naturally dominant dogs, period, anyways. And for someone to go on there and say that dominance does not exist in the Corso is just, it's, it's not even, it's evil. It's, it's, yeah, it's not dumb. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's very dangerous. And then it goes on further. It started talking about how, talking about alpha rolling, whether you should or shouldn't. And th their theory was you should never alpha roll a dog. It has no purpose, et cetera, et cetera, which I have no, I have opinions on it, but right. that's not really the point. The person went on to say, and this, by the way, is a trainer. That's why it's sad. Mm -hmm. This is a trainer talking in this group and said that, actually, I don't even know if it's a trainer. It's one of those like has all the acronyms and is a behaviorist oh, right, right, right. slash trainer. They went on to say, I'll just give you my, for example, and again, I'm paraphrasing here. I have a hundred pound plus female Kane Corso. And if I were to try to roll my Kane Corso on her side, she would, without blinking an eye, bite me in the face. Because she's dominant. And, and, it, and I actually have all, I, I saved it because I wanted to show yeah. you. Am I, what, what? Like, you should be able to, in my humble opinion, with proper training and the right, right. relationship, etc., any dog you own, you should be able to do anything you want with them. Roll them on their side, spin them around. We just took a 140 pound Cane Corso, highly reactive, took it to the vet just last week. It's not even been a week. It has a hydroma, uh, like a fluid sack on its elbow, and it needs to get drained. Mm -hmm. Owners incapable, like mm, say incapable, stressed, scared, doesn't want the, the, the vet to get bit or anything. I understand why. I trained this dog when it was four, four ish, five months old. Now the dog's like 10, 11 months old, but it's a Corso. Like, that's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. We trained it and then it became what it is. Right. It doesn't like strangers, especially vets poking it with things. Right. So we take it into the vet's office, 140 pound dog, very, very strong. It does. As soon as the vet comes in, it barks at the vet, growl. It don't want nothing to do with the vet. I said, unacceptable behavior. Yeah. Put it in a down, rolled it into a side submission, yeah. not an alpha roll. Calmly, actually not out of this. anger. No, no, no. I know. With one finger. I know. Side submission. I know. And we were able, to, the vet was able to come in, drain yeah. the thing. We didn't have to sedate the dog. We didn't have to muzzle the dog. We didn't have to tranquilize the dog. We had taught the dog to maintain a side submission no matter what. And that, and, and it was key. We did that when it was, trust me, as a puppy, it wasn't loving it. Mm -hmm. We, we taught it to love it. Whether you love it or not, you got to do it. You mm -hmm. got to do it. It's the same with you mentioned elephant training. I don't know much about elephant training, but I did hear this. Look, you can tie an elephant to a tree. That elephant wants to take off. It'll rip that tree right out of the ground. My understanding what they do is with little elephants, they'll tie it to whatever, maybe a tree or something like that. And the young elephant, the first time it's tied to something like that, will do everything it can to bust loose. It will try. It will scream. It will cry. Ah! Yeah. And then the elephant realizes, I can't win. Yeah. And once it knows that, yeah. I guess when it gets older, they supposedly can just take a little rope or a little chain or something. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. But they are able to put just a little stick in the ground. Dick, dick, dick. Yeah. And the elephant's like, can't go anywhere. Yeah, it's true. And there's a term for it. It's true. I mean, I every yeah, elephant. I don't know. You, no. you you get a male when he's rutting. Like it's things are gonna be different. But no, no. The term. It, I mean, he's 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 conditioned. Right? He's conditioned yeah. To it. yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah. So we have an apology segment that's not real. <laughs> but uh, we basically when we when we go off on somebody, then we apologize. So uh, which is a joke uh, or is it? Um, I apologize for being uh, uh, for all the people who believe that the Earth is round um because i was on a what was a, a bit of a flat earth kick last week 
right? So I'm gonna apologize. I'm you gonna... didn't come out and say that it was clot. You just you didn't say it was. Clot, I just questioned were, uh some it. some things on there. This has become a conspiracy theory po podcast until we have uh, <laughs> Garrett in here, and then he brings us back to the real world and yeah, of I mean, dog training. I'd like to apologize because we talked about dogs way too much on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, sorry, that's just my life. <laughs> Which is what the people want. We didn't talk yeah. about God. We didn't talk about Mike Tyson. Well, I, I have we an apology. About donuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Today I was driving around. And I went to this really cool place called La Jala. <laughs> yeah. And you're I'm like, sorry hey, I don't you know where I am, but I'm like, I think I'm in a place called La Jala. It's pretty cool. La Jolla. You said I that apologize. to somebody. Oh, yeah. To my people. Oh, yeah. And yeah. They, but they knew. Now, I, it, and I knew I was, I said, I know this yeah. the name. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's La Jolla. Yeah. So yeah. I do apologize to the people of San Diego. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. It's a beautiful place. How great is Garrett? He just busted in, in, in the apology segment yeah, and yeah. knew what we're doing. I think so. His apology was like, Quasi real too. <laughs> yeah, oh, right? yeah. We'll apologize proactively to the um, uh, all the four three folks next week, um, but not real. Do we of course. have time for a voicemail or not? Yeah, can I play one voicemail? It's actually not that interesting, but well, it's interesting, but it's not about dogs. But I'm going to play it real quick, and then we got to go. We're going to go eat, mm -hmm. all of us, right? All right. Bring, bring um, bread. Bring bread. Okay, let me see. Here. Sorry, this is boring, bro. See the, this see is the anticipation. Is yeah, it's building. It's I'm getting excited. Um, you, yeah, I wouldn't be getting terribly excited for this one. Yeah, we have a voicemail that we set up, and it's just like yeah, I've heard one or two of them. Emails. It's funky. You never know what you're gonna get, right? Yeah, yeah. under yeah. duress, who's a long time. I want to give a shout out to him, but he he left a long one about flat Earth, and uh, and and sort of he's like the world. Well, the world is round, but. And, uh, but it was too long under dress. Who's a long time. Isn't it funny? You get to know these commenters and like, you, you know, you like them and like yeah, some yeah. are like go down these roads and you just, you know, like these people. Okay. Yeah. We have some long time, uh, subscribers yeah. and Isn't customers. And... Bro, this won't rewind. Okay. You're killing me. I'm trying to figure out how to potty train my lapperdoodle. And you guys are talking about Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah. Me, oh my God. Yeah, he's That's got a he's got a point. He is he's he's like I, I'm trying to hear some dog training, and you guys talking about T Rex. Joel sent him to me. I hope him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go to Garrett. Um, <clears throat> so when yeah, we are the pod. The pod, as we call them, they have a bit of a you know they like to tip them back at night too. I think. Oh, that guy sounds. Yeah, that's lit. that's our listeners. Yeah, that's most of them actually. <laughs> yeah, you get real. I get into all the uh, flat Earth stuff. Uh, so you said you're launching your own podcast, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that going to go live all the uh, platforms or? Yeah, it will. It will. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. It's going to be a big focus on at first. It's going to be a little bit of everything, but mostly untold stories of police canine handlers, right? Um, I already have a solid guest list that we're going to have on. And then from there, just go wherever it goes. But uh, police canine handlers, police canine trainers. Um, I want to hear some war stories getting my father on i'm getting guys that oh, are legends good. in the industry to tell you about just the deployments that they've had stuff that you can't read about anywhere you, it's it's just gonna be wild and that's how we're gonna start but then yeah other dog trainers other ones in and around the industry mm -hmm. and then things completely outside the dog training industry because luckily through through our training and the type of clients we serve I get to meet a lot of really interesting people, very successful people uh, who happen to be dog lovers, right? Mm -hmm. But they're very successful CEOs, uh, business owners, et cetera. And I've always had an interest in, you know, just self-improvement and and running cool. running a business. And so I want to have that on as well, just to, to inspire people to live a better life as well. Just things that I'm interested in. Yeah, really. that's that's what matters, yeah. apparently. But that's coming, baby. All right. Hey, got, let's end this thing. We got to go eat. Okay, I got one more thing. Okay. Go for it. Check this out. So this is gonna be too loud. Are loud. you playing a video? No, I'm not playing a video. Oh, my oh he found me. <laughs> Bro, you are playing a video. No, no, I'm not. Watch, watch this. So is this the one? Then we gotta go. I don't or know. Is it, which one's his? Okay. Either way, subscribe to the channel. What's your channel? It's the top one. American. Standard. No, that's that's my American first. Standard Dog Training. Oh, that's he did say it's the top training. one. Yep, that's okay, the one. The He's one. right. Share. So YouTube. It's gonna be so Genius. loud. Yeah, oh. Okay. And if you want to learn how to train your dog to be the best that it can be, you know where they can go, Joel? D -Y -D -I -Y -K -9. K9 I knew that. Here, and then here's the thing, right? American Standard Dog Training, 
1.49 million subscribers. That's oh, yeah. pretty good. Bro, I'm wondering if I hit, lot. I'm going to go ahead and subscribe. I want you to be happy here. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it'll hit you to 1.5. No, he doesn't care. That let's, would be go. Cool. let's go. Let's go. Oh, boo. Oh, Oh, we're, you were hoping you were the one point. That would be so cool. That would have yeah. been the I coolest thing ever. I can tell you exactly ever. where we're at, man. We are, we're probably like 10K short. Is, is it that close? Yeah. That's, that's soon. That's a nice round number. You we know? We are exactly, at this moment in time, 5,600 short of 1.5 uh, million. That's I, coming. I helped you. Yeah. That's coming soon. Right there. Well, yeah, now we're 55.99 <laughs> or whatever it is. Short. All, right. All right. Hey. We're going to go get a stick. Love you guys. Everyone, thank you guys again for having me on, and thank you to to your subscribers for uh, putting up with me. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Good thank stuff. you. See you guys. See ya.